a former Marine Corps veteran, police officer, and collegiate athlete. I played in the NFL for a total of eight years. My unit was sent to rescue seven POWs back in 2003. As a kid, I always wanted to play football. I was able to live that dream and play in the NFL. Served in the United States Army for six years, and you may or may not know me as a mixed martial arts champion. We are SVP! When I was in Iraq and Afghanistan, I was great at my job. You think it's tough on the battlefield? It was even harder coming home. MVP brings combat veterans and former athletes together that have the same struggle. Leaving the battlefield, the football field, it leaves behind a lot of physical scars, but more so emotional scars. You lose your team. I miss my boys, you know, in the moments and all the stupid shit we did. You know, a couple years ago, I wasn't really looking forward to growing old. Quite often, we need love outside of our occupation. I was missing the camaraderie, the brotherhood, the sisterhood that I, that I had in the military. Our job at MVP is to give you your team back. We start with 30-minute workouts. Just give these guys a burn again. Get them to be beholden to their brother or sister on their right or left again. But the magic is we have a huddle. And we sit down on the mats and we talk it out. We talk about everything. If you swallow your grief, you're going to make yourself sick. And I feel like this is a safe space for everybody to grieve. Like all of us have been dropped in the team and it became our environment, it became our survival. It became our, our will to succeed. And it took finding MVP before I was able to accept my successes. MVP gave me back that locker room feeling again. I wasn't afraid to cry in front of 40 guys in the room, but when I did, they all understood. MVP saved my life. And straight up, MVP did save my life. Everywhere I go, I preach about MVP. Instead of my family being worried now because of MVP and what it, it's allowed me to do, now I'm helping others. We lose 22 vets a day to suicide. That is not okay. That number needs to be zero. They've had our back. It's time we get their back. Who's got my back? I got your back. Who's got my back? I got your back. Who's got my back? I got your back. One, two, three. MVP. Located on Chicago's lakefront and facing one of the most iconic skylines in the world, McCormick Place is the largest convention center in North America. It includes Wind Trust Arena. And a big crowd will be on hand for Bellator 288. Two title fights headline tonight's card after their first fight was declared a no contest due to a cut caused by an accidental clash of heads. Champion Vadim Nemkov will once again defend the 205 pound crown against Corey Anderson in the World Grand Prix final with a million dollar bonus check going to the victor in our co-feature. Patricky Pitbull defends the lightweight belt for the first time against undefeated number one contender Usman Nurmagomedov. As for the rest of the main card, two-time featherweight title challenger, number seven-ranked Daniel Weichel takes on Timur Hizriev, who sports a perfect record heading into his Bellator debut. Number five-ranked heavyweight Tyrell Fortune takes on Daniel James, who won his pro debut under the Bellator banner eight years ago. And fistic fireworks are all but certain when the undefeated Roman Feraldo and Levon Chokoli lock horns at welterweight. 
Heavyweights raise the curtain on tonight's event as Vladimir Govea, who turned 30 yesterday, well, his wish is about to come true. He's about to make his pro debut in the Bellator cage against 31-year-old Corey Mogenberg, who makes his sophomore Bellator appearance. Tail of the tape for this heavyweight matchup. Take a look at the size there, 265.8, and he's cutting weight, so he's walking in here a whole lot heavier to 246. We'll see if that weight makes a big difference. Big John McCarthy and yours truly, Mauro Ranallo, set to call the action cage side with the official introductions. Here's Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome as Bellator MMA returns to Chicago tonight from Wintrust Arena. We get the Bellator 288 prelims underway now with three five-minute rounds in the heavyweight division. Introducing the blue corner first at 5'10", weighing in 246 pounds even. His professional record, 2-4. and four. He fights out of Atomwa, Iowa, presenting Corey the Monster Mogenberg. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner at six foot, weighing in 265.8 pounds, making his professional debut. He fights out of San Francisco, California, Vladimir Blanco Gouveia. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge, Mike Simarusti. The birthday boy from yesterday, Vladimir Govea, hoping to blow away Corey Mogenberg faster than the candles on a birthday cake. While Corey Mogenberg, he hopes to be Mo Problems for the guy making his professional one, debut. One, hey. Bell in round one scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the heavyweight division, and they waste little time in chucking leather. Mogenberg attacking the legs of Govea. Govea whipping a body kick into the midsection of Mogenberg. Govea getting a little bit cocky there, sticking his chin out already. He's felt the power of Mogenberg. He's not pressed, getting a little wild. And a little wild with the swinging punches, but that left hand connected on Mogenberg's beard. Morgenberg has proven to be durable again, looking to earn his first victory in Bellator after losing to Bailey Schoenfelder back at Bellator 265 in August of last year, looking to bounce back from his fourth loss in this opportunity here in Chicago tonight against a guy who was under the bright lights for the first time. He is under the bright lights, and that's a, you know that's a huge element when you're looking at this. It doesn't matter how who you train with, how much you've done. When you get under the lights and it's just you and that other guy in the cage, there's a whole lot of butterflies going, a lot of nerves, and that can have an effect. Lucky for Govea, he gets to train with some of the best in the world at AKA in San Jose, California. Govea needs to stop winging shots from the side so much, a little bit more with being straight coming down the pipe. It looked like Mogenberg was going to don the uh, cape and attempt a Superman punch. Instead, eats the jab from Govea. Mogenberg going downstairs with a calf kick. And while it's not always technical, there's a nice sharp technical jab and a winging right hand. And Govea going primetime Vanderlei Silva. Mogenberg, those wide shots, they leave a big opening, but he's been able to put it on Mogenberg here in the opening round. But you saw how effective when he shot that straight jab down yes. the middle. It touched Mogenberg, and that's what he needs to do. Set up that right hand by us using that jab. You build your foundation with the jab takedown by Govea. Mogenberg controlling the posture of Govea. Govea has experience as a BJJ brown belt competed in several jiu-jitsu competitions in Brazil. They go for the crucifix. Already in the crucifix position, you see how easily he moved there, and that is gonna be a lot of weight for Mogenberg to have to try to get off of him right now. And you see him turning towards a north-south position. Arm kind of stuck in the legs, a little bit of a squeeze. He'll be able to move that out 
but right now, Mogenberg's got a big, heavy man on top of him that can do a lot of damage with short strikes like elbows. Govan side control, working his uh, jujitsu under the guidance of uh, one of the gurus of the Gracie family, Health Gracie. And again, working with the likes of trainer extraordinaire Javier Mendez. And uh, now in the half guard of Mogenberg, posture and now piston like left hands to the face of Mogenberg. Govea looking to light up Mogenberg with the ground and pound. If you saw that posture, as soon as he got that posture, that's when he was effective with those strikes. You're able to utilize all of that space to gain power, but it does give your opponent the ability to move. Govea. Landing at a two to one clip compared to Mogenberg, who forced to work from his back and forced to eat more leather from Govea. Govea said he wanted fans to be excited to watch heavyweights go at it. And uh, here in his professional debut, he's definitely working his ground game and that striking game as well. Govea did a really nice job of passing that half guard, getting into the side control. He can put knee on belly here. There's a lot of things that he can use. And there he goes, knee on belly. On cue. And right to the back. And that's why you do the knee on belly, especially when you're a big man. It is not a comfortable position. It's almost like you watch tape and, and break down fights and actually know the sport of mixed martial arts, John. It's amazing, sir. Every now and then I get lucky. <laughs> fantastic stuff. And speaking of fantastic, John, we're watching the heavyweights go at it here. How about the announcement on February 4th, Bellator MMA going to CBS for the first time. Heavyweight rematch between the champion Ryan Bader against the fabled Fedor as Govea looks for a submission. Yeah, he was looking towards that Kimura, but Fedor against Bader. That's a rematch. And look, Fedor says, hey, beat me the first time, but man, trust me, it's not gonna happen the same way the next, and I can't wait to watch that fight. So excited to have Major League MMA back on CBS. Remember being a part of the original broadcast, Elite XC, of course, on CBS and Showtime, and now Bellator MMA on Showtime, as it is Showtime for Wilson, or make that Vladimir Govea, who treated Corey Mogenberg like the, uh, well, Wilson Volleyball was treated in that Tom Hanks movie. As we go to round two on a good start for Govea, just celebrated his 30th birthday. A lot of nervous energy coursing through the veins. And it's, it's expected. This is your first time, man. You, you want to do so well, and you want it to be fast, but you need to take your time, and you need to break someone down, and that's what he started doing at the end. And there is Hal Gracie, that's right. who's going to probably tell him to do the exact same thing you're saying. No, he's going to tell him. You see how, how the fight went once you took it to the ground? That knee on belly worked well. Let's go right back to it. And when we, when we talked about the straight shots, those are the ones that really worked well for Govea as he was getting in. He went a lot of winging big heavy shots this side like we're seeing right there. Now that's gonna leave your chin out there also. So if Mogenberg can catch him in the middle of one of those transitions of throwing those shots, he can touch his chin and put him down. He's gotta be careful not to break his wrist as well, throwing punches like that and hitting those tiny uh, bones there, but uh, Make no bones about it, Vladimir Govea feeling the first round of this fight. They touch gloves and then resume hostilities here in the second stanza. Mogenberg serving as the first opponent of Govea's career. Govea, confidence is not an issue. No, confidence is an issue, but the one thing that we saw out of Mogenberg when he fought Bailey Schoenfelder is he's durable. He, yes. will take, he will take some punishment. He just took some there. And, and not every fighter can sit there and be the nail for a while and come back. We've seen that Mogenberg will do that. He'll take some shots, but he'll come fighting back. And being able to get up off of the ground this is a good thing for him. It's Vladimir Govea mixing up his offense, resetting, does not respect the power of Mogenberg. Hands a little low, but continues to land lefts and has had a good left hook that has landed while Mogenberg continues to try to chop away at the lead leg and may have just done so because Govea switched stances. Yeah, you can see right away, you know, that it looks like it's nothing, but it adds up. Especially all of a sudden, when he switched stances, it's telling you, well, it's being effective. Yep. Paralyzed either, what is it, the perennial nerve? The perennial nerve, nerve right running down. There's again that lead left hook by Govea that connects. Mogenberg backs up. 
Bovea needs to stop throwing ones, though. And there's that catapult right hand, the overhand right connection. There's a one-two from Bovea now picking up pressure shot. and pace. Mogenberg having a little bit of a problem there. That right hand connected well. And so does that left consistently. Yeah, there it is. Clips Mogenberg and Vladimir Govea punches in bunches, and the referee steps in. Happy birthday, Vladimir Govea. Welcome to Bellator MMA. And what a professional debut gets the stoppage just like he wanted to. He did get the stoppage, and it was it was nice to see him when he saw that he had hurt Mogenberg. He went after him a little bit wild, kind of crushed the space, but this is all things that happens when you have a guy, this is his first professional fight. It is not easy, and he went in there and he fought really well. Yeah. Big looping overhand, and just like you're saying, he's hitting that to the side. That is how you can break your hand, but some of these were really effective and landed and hurt Mogenberg. That, you can tell, he felt a beautiful left hand straight, but then he starts giving the clubs a little bit. That's not a whole lot of good stuff. The knee is looking much better, but then he goes and he gets the finish from the referee saying that's enough. Another AKA fighter making that all-star crew proud as Vladimir Govea, hey, dips his toes in the, the deepest end of the sport. Not many get to say they make their professional debuts on the big stage, but that's exactly what Vladimir Govea has done, and he makes it memorable, moving to 1-0 and with a TKO. Let's make it official with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it comes to an end. One minute, 46 seconds into round number two. The winner by TKO, now an undefeated professional, Vladimir Blanco Gouveia. Victorious in his professional debut, Vladimir Gouveia begins what he hopes will be a long and fruitful journey inside the Bellator MMA cage. It is time to welcome the crew at the fight desk. Hello, Amanda Guerra. Hello, Josh Thompson. Hello, Moro Ranallo. Yes, we've been waiting up here. It is going to be a great night. Amanda Guerra, two-time world champ, Josh Thompson, Bellator 288. We're sold out tonight, Joshua. It's going to be packed in here. It's filling in right now. It's filling in very quickly, and I'm excited for it tonight. We're trying to maintain our energy, but it's a little bit difficult. All right, here's what we've got coming up tonight. We're going to talk to you about our main event, the finale of the light heavyweight World Grand Prix. Now, things almost came to a conclusion back in April between Corey Anderson and Vadim Nimkov. But the fight then ruled no contest because of an accidental headbutt. The Dean Mimcott had a very nasty cut above his eye. Josh, both you and I agree it was the right call at the time to call it. Corey Anderson, up until that point, was winning that fight. Vadim Nemkov has made a lot more changes. He wasn't used to this American style of wrestling. He actually moved down to Florida. Uh, nice weather there. <laughs> really nice to experience. get ready for this fight. What do you think about this main event, take two? I think that Corey Anderson's gonna try to pick up where he left off, and I think Vadim Nemkov's gonna try to start this fight over from the beginning with new stuff. He wants to come out there and show that the first fight wasn't going his way, but he's made some changes to, comp to, to fix those problems that he had in the first fight. Corey Anderson is gonna come out there and continue where he left off, but he's gonna also have to be very mindful that he doesn't go out there thinking it's gonna be just as easy to get those takedowns as it was in the first fight. Both of these guys actually made big moves to get ready for this fight. Uh, we had Vadim Mimkov move to Florida, work with American Top Team. Corey Anderson moved from the Northeast all the way to the Midwest, uh, right around this area is from here. He's got a big crowd. More, he says, if you're not gonna see him in the cage, he's out hunting in the woods. But we can expect a spectacular performance. Let's keep going with these prelims, Moro. A lot of hunters in the cage tonight searching for those important victims just like our next matchup, featherweight division, Isaiah Hokett, fresh off his first victory as a professional, meets Matthias Nodder, who makes his Bellator debut, sporting a perfect record of 3-0, all three fights ending inside the distance. This is Isaiah Hokett. We, we know what kind of wrestling background he has. He was an outstanding collegiate wrestler. First fight. Came out, put his chin out there and got knocked out. Then he decided, oh, I'm gonna go back to what I do. He looked fantastic controlling the fight. He is very good if he gets to the top position. It's gonna be tough to beat if that happens. 
Simply put, you take a look at this featherweight matchup, one and one against three and zero. Oh. Both guys very young in their MMA career, but both with a ton of talent. Very young, very hungry. Let's get the official introductions from Michael C. Williams. For those joining us tonight on the live stream on YouTube at both channels, Showtime Sports and Bellator MMA, we welcome you to Chicago as we get set now to go three five-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Introducing the blue corner at five foot seven, weighing in 144 pounds even, his professional record undefeated at three and oh from Guayaquil, Ecuador. He fights out of Wisconsin Dells, Wisconsin, presenting Matias Babyface Nadir. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner at five foot ten, weighing in 145.4 pounds as a professional. Early on, he stands at one and one out of Clovis, California. He fights out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, Isaiah Hogan. And once again, the referee in charge, Mike Simarusti. 26-year-old Isaiah Hokett representing the vaunted Jackson Wink MMA Academy in Albuquerque. Matias Nodder seeks his fourth consecutive first round finish. Inside kick and immediately Nodder moving forward. Nice counter left hand from the southpaw. Hokett on the jaw. Yeah, you're going to see Hokett trying to put a lot of pressure. He believes that pressure is going to be the key against Nader based upon Nader's very strong, he's explosive, but he does not do anything halfway and that's gonna gas him out. Smart pressure, smart pressure, smart pressure. Smart pressure. The words from the Jackson Wickham MMA Academy. Level change by Hogan and secures the takedown. And that's exactly what they were looking for. Smart pressure, meaning keep him busy, make him work, and then when you can take him down, do it. But we've seen the Nader in his last fight had a beautiful triangle choke submission against Rob Pinnacle. He's going for that same technique right now. If you're Hokic, you want both arms in, which he does have, even though it looks like he's trying to extend that one, it's not in a position where he's gonna get that arm bar. But it did at least put it in a position where Nader was able to get back to his feet based and, upon that attack. And it might also make Hokic, who has a great wrestling background at uh, Drexel and Fresno State, to reconsider the takedowns, considering what he's uh, met with so far from the uh, debuting fighter, Nodder. You know, and in talking with his coach, Greg Jackson, they, they're going to use that takedown as a tool. They're going to do it multiple times. He, he will take him down, and he will get back up, he said. He goes, we want to make this guy work. We want him to have those mat returns. We want him to think that he's going to get comfortable, and all of a sudden, that pressure's back, and he's just going to start getting exhausted. Okay, Beautiful. showcasing a diverse striking attack, some great hand speed, good punch placement. Putting punches together in combination. Now Nader in the southpaw stance throws a kick off balance. Nice return. You see those counterattacks by Hokic. Those are very clean. He's taking, moving his head just a little bit off the center line as Nader comes at him and then returns. Clean, clean counter strike right there. And Hokic looking for an elbow. Stepping into the elbow attempt and uh, Nodder feeling the pressure of the southpaw Isaiah Hokett. Nodder's kick was caught and then Hokett sweeps the right hand across the jawline of Nodder. So Hokett dictating the terms of the fight and putting the pressure, the effective aggression on Matias Nodder. He's doing a great job. You know, again, this is his third professional fight. Mm. Here he goes again, back to that takedown like we were talking about. Use the strikes to set up the level change, high IQ. Absolutely, and this is what he's been learning while he's been at Jackson Wink, and that's why he went there. It's all about, it, it doesn't matter if you had that background in wrestling, you've got to learn the theory of fighting. One of his main trainers at, or training partners at Jackson Wink has been Aaron Pico. You have an update on his health status. Yeah, it was Aaron Pico until Aaron ended up having to have soldier, uh, shoulder surgery. He had extensive shoulder surgery based upon that dislocation when he fought Jeremy Kennedy, but they say it all went well and he will be back probably within six to eight months. We wish Aaron Pico a speedy recovery. 
I'm sure he's enjoying Isaiah Hokett's handiwork thus far as Nader, though, snatching a hand, looking for the submission underneath again. Hokett stacking them along the fence oh, just past the midway or make that 90 seconds left in the first. Almost for, thought I was back in a, a boxing broadcast there. It would have been the midway point of a three-minute round. That will be until December 17th next. But again, you've already seen two takedowns. You've seen Hoke be able to control the positions, and you see Nader bringing up, especially in that last sequence, looking for that change of position to get the submission. He was not in a place that that submission was going to work, and he took a lot of shots from Hoke. We had an eye poke, and that's the reason we have that stoppage. And you can see Nader stick those fingers out. Good. They yep. rub the eye okay. there of Hokic. Watch your fingers, Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Matias Nader from Ecuador, but now fighting out of Wisconsin. And coming up on the final 60 seconds of Beautiful. the first round, and Hokic able to drop Nader with that kick. And that's just catching him off balance. It wasn't it, it was the that hard of a kick, but he had the timing of that kick, and when he did it, right back into the wrestling situation. And this is when you're, you're starting to drown, Moro. This is not an easy thing for Nader because he's not he's not getting through in the stand-up. He's taking shots. The takedowns, he can't stop. The best he's been able to do is off his back, throw up those submissions. With 30 seconds left in the opening round, Hoka has secured three takedowns, three for three in that department, and continues to wear down the debuting Matthias Nodder with 20 seconds now left in the first frame. And Hoka goes to the body, then quickly upstairs, putting together right hands to the side of Nodder's head, trying to posture, but content in riding this good opening round out for Isaiah Hoka. Okay, so let's get some big, deep breaths. Big, deeper, deeper breaths. One more like that, please. All right, great round, hold this. Now, stay disciplined. He's starting to break. You can see he didn't get up real effectively on that last one, so stay disciplined. Keep doing what you're doing. Listen, he's gonna try to come and retake the fight, because that round was yours. So be smart about it, angle out when you need to. Joey. Hey, when you go to guard, stop putting your hand to the mat, because that's where he's instantly overhooking you. It's stuck. Just go right to bicep. Yeah, it's not, it's not libre. Ataca la pata delantera para que no shoot. Okay? Tu escucha la pata delantera de él. First. Bellator MMA event to uh, emanate from Wind Trust Arena here in the Windy City of uh, Chicago. Isaiah Hokett, Matias Nodder begin round at number two of their scheduled three round featherweight contest. And for Hokett begins to again put the pressure on, deliver, but Nodder trying to be more aggressive coming forward. And as always, sage advice from Greg Jackson in the corners, he gets clipped. Does uh, Nodder by Hokett. Well, the reason Nodder's getting clipped is if you, if you watch as he's coming in, he's starting to duck his head down. You cannot take your eyes off your opponent. That, that is not going to keep you from being hit. You've got to be able to look and see what your opponent's throwing at you. And right now, Hokett is just starting to take this fight over. I think his coach and Greg Jackson saying exactly the right thing. And again, you see it. The wrestling background takes him down, has the top position, but will get up. He doesn't care. He wants to use that as a way to break it. Opening minute of the second round, and Johnny told us that in this fight, he wanted to show everyone he's a well-rounded fighter, not just a wrestler. Well, he's definitely uh, proving that thus far. And, and you can see, just take a look at the body language right now of Nader. He has taken a lot of heavy shots. See how he's just backing off there. There's a body kick by Nader, who is in trouble here as he's, he's he's now in that survival mode he's not even thinking about trying to win this fight now it's about how do i survive what's happening it's hokin strafing the body of nodder now simply target practice and, and needs to figure that out. nodder desperately looking for the takedown Hokit needs to figure out i've broken him so let me put him away don't don't just sit there and play with him put him away now and that's exactly why he wanted him back on his feet head kick right hand 
It is simply target practice for Isaiah Hokit, who is humbling Matthias Nodder in Nodder's Bellator debut. And how much more can Nodder absorb? Yeah, he's not going to be able to take much more. Right now, he's just trying to hold that leg. It's not going to do anything. Hokit makes him get back to his feet. He's been punishing him on the feet right now, Nader. Oh, nice uppercut. Lead right uppercut by Hokit on Nader. And Nader struggling to just stay standing. And yet there's a right hand that lands. Oh, a one-sided advantage. Yeah, take a look at that. 33 of 62 for Hokit, 3 of 11 for Nader. So you, what, it, what it's telling is Hokit doesn't have anything come his way, so this is nothing more than a sparring match. And any time you're landing 50% or over, it's a very this good... This referee game. needs to stop this fight because this guy is not competitive right now. When he's starting to hide in the fight, that's not... Nader has his back, puts the hook in. Nader desperately trying to turn things around. Waistlock by Nodder. Trying to buy himself some time, John. I, I agree with what you were saying. And, and here we are now with, uh, you know, Nodder not in a position to really well, this is do good. much more than survive. This is good for Nodder in the fact that even though he's going to lose this position, just like he just did, he wasn't absorbing any damage, but now he's back to absorbing damage. Hammer fist, left hands, knees. Finish Isaiah, the call from the corner, and he is very much on the verge of finishing a gutsy, well, the referee should be stopping the fight. overmatched Matthias Nodder. Right knee, Nodder doubled over. It's a punching oh, bag right now. Off. This isn't fighting, there you go. Stay here, Doc's coming, right? Stay Isaiah here, Hokin coming. improves Doc's to coming. two and one as a pro and here in Bellator MMA with a dominant display against an outgunned Matthias Nodder. Beautiful display of what he's been doing with Jackson Wink, learning how to be a fighter, utilizing all those skills, his hands, the wrestling, being a guy that's pushing the pace and using his cardio, everything he did was great. I saw, I know different styles, but shades of Usman Nurmagomedov in terms of the <laughs> way he mixes up his kicks in the attack and these young fighters who are putting together their creative flows. Yeah, and you see right here, Hogan, that beautiful low kick goes out to the stand up. And at this point, Nader is nothing more than he's a punching bag. He's just trying to survive in this. It was about time the referee stopped that. I thought that was a late stop, but you should have done it long before. And in no way do I want to compare a youngster who's just starting his career to another youngster who's on the verge of perhaps winning the Bellator oh, no. title. But still, what I like to see is the fact that we're seeing different kicks delivered in transition, being chained together at such a young age. The instincts are there, John. He's absolutely, he's learning how to be a professional MMA fighter, and he's showing his progression. And when he went back to the, the corner after the first round, you saw a guy that put a lot of energy out in the cage, and zero as far as his, he was not breathing hard, he was fresh, he was ready to go. Joey Villasenor, taking a page out of my playbook, I see now, this bespectacled Joey Villasenor had a chance to call his uh, fight against Robbie Lawler in pride, a veteran of the sport, now a great coach. Let's make it official with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, it comes to an end officially. Three minutes, 48 seconds. Round number two, the winner by TKO, Isaiah Hogan. Isaiah Hokett, second straight victory, second straight finish. Let's go back to Amanda Guerra. Nice photo up there with Greg Jackson and Joey Villasenor, AG. Yeah, we're always a photo up here, Moro. We're always a photo op up here. I keep waiting for Joss to take a picture. Uh, and he's always on his phone, and I'm like, I'm ready. Uh, not getting that yet. Anyway, look, here's the thing. We talked to you guys about our main event tonight. We have two championship fights on our main card tonight. We're going to talk about our co-main event in Legendary Family versus Legendary Family. We have Patricky Pipple going up against Usman Nurmagomedov. Look, it's really cool. Patricky Pipple and Patricio, both world champs right now. Usman could be a world champ alongside his cousin, Habib. That would be fun. 
one as well. Maybe not as cool as being brothers here. A 36-year-old versus a 20-year-old. You got a lot of experience going, but it gets a lot of youth. We're going to see their way in here. There's a big height difference as well. What do you think about these two fighters heading to this one? It really is going to come down to the game plans. Now, we're talking with Usman. He's going to want to use his reach and his range in terms of his long side kicks, head kicks, keep Patriki's hands loyal to his head. Basically, make, making him a more of a defensive fighter and then having to rely on him to be a counter striker, which Usman believes he's able to get in and out before Patriki can land a big shot. Whereas Patriki's got to try to fight him in a phone booth. He's got to step inside, be able to use his boxing, rip the body, and come back up to the head. He's got very, very powerful hands, him and his brother both, Patricio and Patriki. If Patriki can go ahead and get inside that phone booth and make it a, a dog fight, no pun intended, but if he can make it a dog fight, I think he's got a good chance of getting this win. Patriki Pipple tied for the most knockouts in Bellator history. He talked about the power in his hands. I want to talk to you about his emotional state. 36 years old, and, and we're going to see a piece from him later on, and he, he was crying in it. We got to talk to him, and this was sort of a different side of Patriki that we've seen. Do you think he's starting to think about the end or not yet? Or maybe it depends on tonight. No, that Patricio and Patricki came up together through Bellator. They are the pillars of this organization. Them along with Douglas Lima. Those three guys have been here for the longest time. They've got the most fights, the most wins, all of these things. It starts to, you do start to think about it. I don't think he's thinking about the end. I think he's thinking about the time that he's been able to spend with his brother, how much it meant to him. Family legacy, it is absolutely incredible with both of these families as well. Let's continue the prelims. Moro, back down to you. Thank you very much, Amanda. More action in the featherweight division. Laird Anderson, 2-0 as a pro. Both fights here in Bellator. He faces Rob Fennecal trying to snap a two-fight losing streak. Yeah, you can take a look right here. This is Lowell Anderson. Laird Anderson, he is a very good submission expert. His father, Lowell, is the guy I was talking about. Taught him well, and he is so good when he gets the back. You do not get rid of him. Now, Fennecal does submissions in a different way. He likes the leg attacks. He will go after arms, but he's very quick. Right here, jumps on that beautiful heel hook submission. That tells you right there, the man knows what he's doing. Benicle's, uh Bellator debut victorious, but again, looking to get back on the winning track as we go to the tail of the tape. He is looking to get back on the track. You know, 33 years of age compared to the young blood of 24 in Laird Anderson. This should be an outstanding matchup. Here's Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight here at the Bellator 288 prelims, we'll stay right here in the featherweight division. Again, scheduled for three five-minute rounds. Introducing first, the blue corner at five foot five, weighing in 146 pounds even. His professional record, two wins, two losses. He fights out of Rockford, Illinois. Rob, Big Papa, Georgia, Pinnacle. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner at five foot seven, weighing in 145.6 pounds as a professional. He's undefeated at two and oh. He fights out of San Jose, California, presenting Laird Anderson. In charge, your referee Kevin McDonald. Laird Anderson says he goes to sleep thinking of being a better martial artist and when he wakes up he does anything he can to progress in the sport looking to go 3 and 0 against Rob Fennecal 33 but just his fifth professional fight and we mentioned Anderson's father Lowell competed in one UFC fight but it was a memorable night UFC 22 he lost to John Lewis but the main event one of the first true UFC classics Frank Shamrock upsetting Tito Ortiz in what was Shamrock's swan song undefeated at 5-0 and in the octagon brother and there's a level change beautiful job by Larry Anderson I don't know if that was an upset I thought Frank Shamrock was the favorite in that one but <laughs> great win by Frank Shamrock long ago bigger Tito Ortiz yes definitely bigger 
bigger than, than Frank. And that's why considered to be much too much to handle. But hey, you're way ahead of the game. One of the pioneers of how conditioning became a weapon. In fact, Frank said it best. Conditioning is my best submission. Absolutely. And it proved to be that night. Absolutely. And, and it's become a, a foundation for the sport. Look at the effects of Frank Shamrock on this sport still linger today. And people understand that you can break people with your cardio. Something that Frank did often. Speaking of AKA. Yes. That's where Anderson fights out of again another of that in price of uh, pipeline in Northern California trains with his brother Elias Anderson. Beautiful heavy shot but again a little overextended almost got caught there nice job of getting himself back squared up with Fennecal. Laird right now is in a position he's very comfortable with he knows exactly what he wants to do. You see him he's just taking his time to gain space. And when he gains that space, he's trying to land big, heavy shots. No little, no, no little body, body head with him. Yeah, Anderson, a young black belt at 24 years of age, but again, born into the family business. <laughs> From the moment he was born, he was put on the mat, learning jujitsu, learning how to wrestle. It was just part of what the family did. Is that where Lowell swaddled him was on the, on the mat? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Two minutes have elapsed here in the opening round and it's all Laird Anderson. Beautiful short elbow. He's at half guard now. Very strong position for him. You see how well his leg is bringing that knee up towards the armpit area of Fennecal. He's utilizing his head for pressure points just to drive Fennecal's head over. Everything he's doing, very smart, very tactical. Ground and pound is an absolute art form unto itself. You cannot sit there and think, oh, it's easy to do. It has a skill set, and Laird Anderson is very good. Hall of Famer Mark Coleman will appreciate you <laughs> saying that. The Godfather of Ground and Pound midway through this opening round, and it's uh, Anderson continuing to put that topside pressure on Fennecal, and, and Fennecal from the half guard nice unable to uh, hip escape, shrimp out. Nice job of trapping the arm there. You see that knee on the ground. Now Fennecal's got to bring his arm inside of it. It's not easy to do. Now he's in almost crucif he's in a crucifix position. Laird's just trying to free his one leg. Now he's into that side control position. Now he's got that arm. Now he can open up with and that left arm. The crucifix and the elbow. Big elbows. From Anderson and smashing down in the face of Fennecal. Trying to use the fence to help him escape this dire position. And a beautiful choice as far as, you know, this is what you talk about a smart fighter. Doesn't go to just punches, slices down with the elbow. That's going to cause more injury, more cuts, and get the attention of the referee more quicker. Corey Anderson will try to do the same thing in the main event in that rematch of uh, the light heavyweight Grand Prix final. We've seen him do massive damage with elbows in his career, but it's Laird Anderson now. Fennecal, whose victories have both been via heel hook, has found himself in the clutches of Laird Anderson more than he would have liked in this first round. Uh, Fennecal has figured out that, you know what, there's levels to grappling, and he's a good grappler. He just hasn't reached the level right now of Laird Anderson. Laird has been able to dominate the position. Beautiful elbow strikes like we just saw there. like a pushing. They're communicating to each other? Yeah, just a little bit of information he was telling them right there. 45 seconds to go here in the opening round. Continues to be top control for Anderson, has also at different points controlled the arms now from the vertical base, crashes back down on Fennecal. 30 seconds remain in round one. And it was Anderson trying to pass the guard. A lot of output by Laird Anderson, but if you're Rob Fennecal taking all these shots, it adds up, it just drains your gas tank. Yeah, Anderson has been credited with landing 21 strikes compared to six for Fennecal here in what has been a dominant round for the unbeaten Laird Anderson and maybe, Anderson maybe trying to give Fennecal a taste of his own medicine. Hey, you don't need to sit if you don't want to. Good. That's good. A little water. Yep. Tina. The water. Yeah. That's a really good round, man. Now you feel. 
Yeah. Now you feel the pressure. Okay? Yeah. Feel the difference. Okay? Let's yeah. work our feints in again. Okay? Let's work our feints in again. Okay? You Good can for that knee. Get your feet off from underneath. Good sprawl, okay? You're doing great. You're doing great. We just got to get our hands on them a little more, okay? Hey, if you do end up on bottom again, try to find the far side underhook. Work for that far side underhook. Ryan. If you got to work it in, Ryan, go. Ryan, go. Seconds out. Okay. okay. Venacle fighting out of Rockford, Illinois. Just happens to be the same hometown of Corey Anderson, who we will see in the main event. Anderson again fighting out of Back San Jose, Florida, California. Round at number two. Round two, gentlemen. In the Bellator MMA featherweight division as you unpack what you saw in that first five minutes, John. What impressed you the most? Oh, there was an impressive left hand from Venacle to initiate contact here in the second round as they swing at each other. Yeah, Fennecle not, not having his hands up. Oh, I'm tell you, kick his, to the face by Anderson. His arms are heavy from that first round, trying to hold on to Laird Anderson, trying to control a little bit of the damage that was coming his way. I guess to, to finish uh, the point I was asking you, it's well, Laird Anderson again, level change, takedown. Much of what we saw in the opening round, uh, so much to like from Anderson, and obviously a 10-9 round for Anderson on your unofficial score. Absolutely, it's definitely 10-9, almost verging into the 10-8 there. There was a lot of shots, some heavy elbow strikes, just not quite enough damage. And Anderson looking to do damage with ground and pound. Wide base. Trying to deliver strikes. Fennecle trying to neutralize the attack and does so momentarily. Seeing all this you're seeing as he's trying to hold on to those arms and everything, he's squeezing hard. And it's I'm not saying anything wrong with it. It's stopping some of the attack of Larry Anderson. But it, your arms get tired after a while. And that's why when you see him get up and his arms seem a little bit heavy, a little bit slower, that's the reason why. Lactic acid building up. Anderson always looking to test himself in all facets of fighting, including the mental game, which, you know, according to the cliches, it's all mental. And uh, Laird Anderson, who has sat under the learning tree of not only his family, but some of the best minds in the sport, showcasing that IQ and showcasing his growth as a fighter in this matchup tonight. Nice job of slicing through on that. Now he's free right into a crucifix position. He's got the arm. He can go for the Khmer. Now he's just opening up with elbows. Looking to open up. Watch your spine. See, and that is not a good position right now. Fennecle to start throwing knee strikes to the body. It's not going to do anything. He's got to get his arm out. Ground, and now it's very nice. Anderson looking to open up Fennecle like a double click as he's got the crucifix and raining down the left hands. Fennecle unable to defend. And, and it's, it's over. And it's over. Laird Anderson vanquishes Rob Fennecle in impressive fashion to move to three and oh. And he has, well, definitely impressed here tonight, John. Yeah, he looked, he looked fantastic. There was some words said here at the end, but it was almost the same thing. It was a setup that we heard earlier. Fennecal was trying to get Anderson to do something different. Anderson knew that he was doing well in the fight. Once Laird Anderson decided to take the fight back to the ground, Rob Fennecal had nothing but problems in stopping the movement. He just progressed position all the way to this beautiful crucifix. Took the arm, buried it deep, and then just started landing heavy shots, both punches and elbows at times. Fennecal has no ability to defend himself intelligently, and that's why Kevin McDonald came in and stopped the fight. But nothing has stopped Laird Anderson thus far. Looking to continue his climb. Still very much in the embryonic stages of his professional career, just as third professional fight all of them again under the the Bellator banner and there's obviously pressure that comes with that but so far the pressure has uh, produced some uh, sparkling results so far he's handled that pressure pretty well All right, let's make it official with Michael C. Williams.
Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, referee Kevin McDonald steps in, waves off the contest. Your official time, two minutes, 28 seconds. Round number two for the winner by TKO Steel, undefeated Laird Anderson. Well, I know another AKA champion, Josh Thompson, has to be pleased with AKA's Laird Anderson. Amanda, what, what, what says the puck? Josh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you say that. Were you able to hear more? I used to train him when he was 10 years old. <laughs> I just, I just <laughs> aged myself, him and his brother. So they used to come and train at the at AKA when I was there, and they used to take some of my classes. I used to train and roll with them, and they've got them really, really good on the ground. They're wrestling, they're jiu-jitsu, fantastic. Ten years old, huh? I used to train him when I was ten years old. All right, look, maybe Dan Weichel, we're going to talk about him. He might kind of know what you're talking about here. We're going to talk about our featherweight pal coming up tonight. Daniel Weichel, talk about opposite sides, Joshua. This will be the 56th fight of his career. He is ranked seventh right now. Going up against a stud, though, in Timur Hizriyev, making his Bellator debut. He's 11-0. If he wins this fight, could very well jump into the rankings to disrupt this whole division. That's what he wants to do. Okay, so here's the trash talking. Timur Hizriyev told us this week, he goes, oh, yeah, Daniel Weichel. I watched him back when I was in high school, which really wasn't that long ago. How much of a stud, though, is this kid? Hizriyev is a stud. He's got speed. He's got power. He knows how to mix it up. He's a true mixed martial artist. He will throw on the feet to get you baited in, and then he'll shoot underneath the takedowns he is fantastic now you said something that oh this may potentially put him in the rankings no this will shake up the rankings he's making his debut against a ranked opponent in Dale Weichel this is a big extremely tough task for him and if he gets it done he's gonna put himself right into that talk have you ever been on one of those sides where you're trash talking an older guy or someone trash talked you as the older guy I've been the older guy for the longest <laughs> time so. you had a birthday recently happy birthday to you uh Moral we'll send it back down to you all right, thank you very much, Amanda, here at Wind Trust Arena. We're just getting things started. Bellator 288, and it's time for action in the middleweight division. The 4-0 Jordan Newman taking on Jaden Talker, who is fighting for the first time in the Bellator MMA cage. He brings a 2-2 two two mark to this three-round affair in the 185-pound weight class. For this middleweight matchup, you can take a look. Jordan Newman, an outstanding wrestler, 73-inch reach. Jaden Talker, more of a boxer with a 71-inch reach. We'll see if he can utilize that smart inside style to hurt Jordan in this fight. Here once again, Michael C. Williams. To all those joining us across the UK tonight live on BBC iPlayer, we welcome you to Chicago here in the States as we get set now for three five-minute rounds in the middleweight division. Introducing the blue corner at 5'8", weighing in 185.6 pounds. His professional record two and two. He fights out of Finley, Ohio, Jaden the Tag Talker. And across the cage, his adversary out of the red corner at six foot, weighing in 185.6 pounds. The undefeated professional enters with four victories, no losses, fighting out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Jordan, not human, Newman. In charge, your referee, Rob Madrigal. Jordan Newman, two-time Division Three National Thanks, Wrestling Thanks. Champion, will look to use his wrestling against Jaden Tucker, who feels that he will have the edge in the stand-up department. And this, his first fight in Bellator MMA, had a chance to catch up with Newman's coach, Duke Rufus, who very high on this fighter and really high on the next generation of fighters coming up through Rufus Sport. Well, he should be high on Jordan Newman. Jordan's an outstanding athlete, great wrestler. He's got a mean streak in him, and it's one of the things I really like about him as a fighter. He's calm, relaxed, but when he gets in the cage, he wants to do damage. He doesn't want to just win. He wants to break you. He wants to finish you. And Newman showing Talker that, hey, you shouldn't talk about 
striking because he's got the early advantage and there's a left hand right down the pipe bouncing off the face of Tucker. Well, you can, you can tell that Duke has done a little bit of uh, instruction with Jordan Newman now in his stand-up game. That left hand has been right down the middle multiple times and it's already opened up Tucker. Newman fighting out of the southpaw stance, both of them southpaw. But of course, we're seeing more and more in MMA, and due to the elements of the sport, you better know how to switch and be comfortable from both sides. Yeah, you, the, the more comfortable you are being able to go from both sides, Newman right now does not have to worry about that. He hasn't really taken any kind of damage from Talker at this point. He's just measuring the range, looking at the distance, nice attack with the knee. Stalker switches stances, trying to feint, moving to his right, and we've seen that right hook already land for Newman. Coming up on two minutes gone here in the opening round. One of the things when you see a talker beat in that orthodox stance. Duke Rufus and the rest of the Rufus Sport coaching staff. Go ahead, Johnny. Newman has been winning that foot placement. He's always been able to put his foot to the outside. That's what's going to lead to that left hand straight down the middle. Coming up on the midway point of the opening round. And that's one of the, exactly what his coach is telling him right now. All Jordan Newman needs to really think about, just touch him. Don't worry about how hard it is. Throw your hands nice and comfortably out there. And it's, the more you touch him, the quicker he'll go down. Composed, methodical. Newman in control, the center of the cage. Hawker trying to figure out a way to navigate a path to some kind of success, but instead Newman clips him again as Talker moves forward. Talker at this point has not really been able to figure out how to get within range to do damage. Obviously that was a nice overhand right by him right there. It's only when Newman is the one that's making these encounters occur. And Jaden Talker at 27, simply inspirational to be here tonight, has had myriad issues with his health and both physically and mentally one time, weighed almost 300 pounds and yet has worked his way into shape, has found his calling and now hoping to make the most of his Bellator debut against a, a fighter who's definitely on the come up in Newman. Yeah, he's definitely on the come up. But one of the things I really want to comment on is, you know, Jordan Newman is known as a wrestler. This guy's been an outstanding wrestler, Division Three champion, NC2As, but he's just all striking, like you're saying. He's like, but I like the fact that he's not rushing in for the takedown. He's doing well in the stand-up, and you've got to have these fights in these moments where you say, I need to work myself into that shot. If I'm going to do it, I'm not going to just raw dog and take it just because I'm a better wrestler. Well, Newman told us he, his fight game continues to evolve, and he can't wait to show how well-rounded his skills have become. And here in the opening round, showing continued improvements in the striking department. This is with the head kick, half kick counter by Talker. So a opening round that was contested only in the stand-up department where Newman and Talker both had some success. Although it's Talker that's bloody. <laughs> hey, beautiful work right there, Jaden. Hey, Jaden, everything looked good. Jaden, the only thing, hey, the only thing I need more. This is that beautiful left hand right down the middle right there. That was when he tried for the flying knee. 
just caught him a little bit off. Talker doing a good job of making sure that doesn't hit the chin. Nice oblique kick. Very measured round by both fighters, both trying to find the range. That was a beautiful left hand right down the pipe that landed right in the middle of Talker's Nine face there. Go, Interesting up. matchup so here. far. Let's go, let's go. Well delivered left hand, turning over his hand right at the second, snapping it and delivering the just rewards as Talker and Newman begin round at number two. Newman immediately storms the center of the cage, putting pressure on Talker. Talker going down low with his attack. Well, Talker's had some success with that low kick. He's landed that a lot during the first round. The big difference maker in that first round for me, that left hand of Jordan Newman. It found the target and it had power on it throughout the round. Talker pying, and there Newman crashing the space, but gets clipped on the counter from Talker. Talker, demolition fight team. And trainer Gary Young, of course, we've talked about Duke Rufus. And of course, home of champions like Sergio Pettis. And of course, Rafion Superstat's going to get involved in that semifinal with Danny Sabatello. I understand you uh, get a chance to speak with them coming up later tonight here in Chicago. Yeah, I get to speak with the Italian gangster at <laughs> you, you word in <laughs> That's not going to be easy. Really looking forward to the semifinals as Newman comes forward on Talker. He's Talker able to escape. He needs to be careful of lifting that chin up though as he's coming forward. Talker had a, ch a chance of touching that. Newman continues to be measured. There's the kick by Talker. Talker much more movement. Spinning kick misses for Newman. And as we've talked about, and you're talking to Duke earlier, saying that we would see different wrinkles in Newman's game. We know about his wrestling credentials, but content to keep it standing against the debuting talker. Yeah, New what Newman needs to do right now is settle himself down into keep that chin tucked down into his chest. And when he comes forward, there you go. Comes forward, land more than ones. You want to be going in combinations. Don't just be throwing one shot and expecting it to do something. Go with your combinations. They're going to get you a lot farther. Second time that Newman has detonated a knee attack, blood flowing down the face of Jaden Talker. Midway point of the second stanza, Talker moving around the perimeter, but unable to get inside, move into the, the pocket where he would try to at least slow down the pressure of Newman. Now they crash into space. Newman changes levels, and Newman has Talker on the fence and immediately to back control. And that's what we're talking about. Use your hands. You're going to get into that wrestling situation. Now he's got the back. First takedown. Talker going to try to get back to his feet, but Newman now going to try to put a hook in it, look like. Now going for the rear naked choke. Yeah, he's trying to get that hook in Blood. so he can secure himself in the back. That blood's not going to help Talker in keeping that choke off. Nice job by Jordan Newman. Talker trying to fight the hands here. Well, Talker's going to find it hard to talk. He's got a sore throat after that rear naked choke from Jordan Newman, who improves to 5-0 and and picks up the first submission win of his burgeoning career. You would think he'd be a little happier about achieving his first submission triumph. And you, you talk about that emotional release, John, when you go through a, a hard camp knowing the pressure to remain unbeaten, the pressure to continue to impress. And there you go. He asked, he asked what you thought. And, and, and John, here's a guy again who's 27 years of age, just entering his physical prime, and we see the evolution. Yeah, and he's got such good wrestling that he can go to it at any time. And you watch this replay, just as he goes after him here, he decides, okay, I'm changing levels. Drives into him with the double leg. Gets the takedown. Was unable to get his hook in like he wanted, but it didn't matter. He took, you saw Tucker come up. He goes and he returns him to the mat. Beautiful body lock takedown. 
and hits that shot right there. That did a lot to unnerve Tonker. Then he goes after the rear naked choke, and at this point, it is all over. You got a very strong individual, big squeeze. Nothing for Tonker to do once those hips are off the ground like you're seeing. That was a beautiful win. I really do think that Jordan Newman came into this fight, though, saying, I'm going to stay on my feet as much as possible. I want to work on my stand-up. I want to show what I have been working on, and he did just that. First submission win for Jordan Newman. First submission loss for Jaden Talker. Let's make it official with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, the tap comes by way of a rear naked choke. Official time, three minutes, 20 seconds. Round number two, the winner by submission, still undefeated Jordan, not human. Jordan Newman, 5-0 with two knockouts and now a submission win on his ledger. Busting out those moves as, uh, well, we're going to move to the second half of our prelim portion of Bellator 288. Four fights in the books, four more to come from Wintrust Arena in Chicago. Streets Bellator fans head to bellatorshop.com and gear up in the same apparel the fighters wear. It's a clash of heads. The fight has been ruled a no contest. It's time to settle the score once and for all. The light heavyweight Grand Prix final is back on. Champ Vadim Nemkov versus Corey Overtime Anderson. Flux lightweight champ and tricky pitbull against undefeated Usman Nurmagomedov. Oh Bellator MMA tonight live on Showtime. Bellator 288 rolls on here in the Windy City. We are in Chicago, Illinois, inside the Wintrust Arena, where tonight two of our fighters are going to settle the score for a $1 million prize. It has been very cold outside, but it is very hot here inside the Wintrust Arena. Taking a look at our main card, we've got coming up tonight on Showtime, kicking off at 9 Eastern there. Vadim Nemkov going up against Corey Anderson here, a rematch of their first title fight, the end of the light heavyweight world grand prix that was back in april it was ruled no contest because of a headbutt that ended up in a nasty gash over vadim nimkov's head so they need yet again in the cage tonight the winner getting one million dollars and just before that another championship bout between Petriki piffle putting his lightweight belt on the line against undefeated usman Nurmagomedov. what a night we have but let's talk about our heavyweight bout we have coming up here josh daniel the american predator versus tyrell fortune here look we had a chance to meet with both of these guys in person. Daniel, um, he is a former bodyguard for Twista. Are you familiar with Twista? Can you like spit some lyrics here, Josh? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> we'll try by the end of the night. Look, he said, I love being a giant. He is 6'6". He's absolutely huge. Tyrell Fortune, on the other hand, look, 6'2", nothing to shy about, but it's a smaller heavyweight. How do these two compare against one another? I stood next to Daniel James the other day, and I was the size of his thigh. That's what, so I kind of didn't have to crouch down, really. He's a mountain of a man. He's a big guy. He's he huge. understands. He understands that what he needs to do is make Tyrell Fortune carry his weight, press him to the fence, hang on him, really try to slow Tyrell Fortune down, but without getting taken down and put on his back. He's got to be able to make sure that he's sticking the jab in his face and really making it uncomfortable for Tyrell Fortune throughout the fight. Now, Tyrell Fortune, what he's got to do is do what he does best, is wrestle, set up his uh, his boxing with his takedowns. If 
If James is worried about being taken down, the Tyrell Fortune's hands will be opened up a lot more and the chance of getting a knockout will increase. We are sold out tonight. Part of that is because of Daniel James. He's from the Chicago area. I asked him, I said, so, I mean, obviously you have your friend Twista, which, you know, we're going to figure out those songs. And I said, is anybody else going to be in-house? He goes, you know, I think every, like, major celebrity in Chicago is going to be here tonight. So we're going to keep an eye out. Who does, in fact, make it here? For now, Maura, we'll send it back down to you. Josh just wishes he was an overnight celebrity enjoying slow jams. You're welcome, everybody, as we get to the light heavyweight division. Undefeated Sullivan Cauley, ranked at number 10, takes on the 3-0 Jay Raddick, making his Bellator debut. And now ready to make his way to the cage, the hybrid, Jay Raddick. Thirty-eight years young for Jay the Hybrid Erratic. He's fighting out of uh, Philadelphia, a city known for its fighting pedigree. Balance MMA and brings in a balanced attack, John. He's 3-0 with one knockout, two submissions, but now steps into the shark tank known as Bellator MMA. Yeah, look, he's an outstanding athlete. I watched him fight super explosive. He uses his range very well. He's got good submissions. He will go on the ground with anyone, and he will compete down there and get his way. So... He's got a big task in Call of Duty, a guy with a lot of confidence coming in this feet, into this fight based upon who he's been fighting and how he's been doing. Good with his hands, good with his wrestling. This is a great matchup between a guy that is a submission guy and a guy that's a wrestler. Will he be good with his prediction? First round KO. Ooh, that's a tough one. <laughs> and now to make his way, Sullivan. And, and I know what you mean when you say that's a tough one, Johnny, because Sullivan Colley, a 26, 4-0 with four knockouts. This is a guy who was obviously proven to be more than just a, a problem for the opponents that he's faced. No one's been able to escape the opening round. Look, you know, it comes from a college you know, wrestling background. You see Jordan Johnson there up there as one of his coaches. He's got very good skills in the stand-up, though. His hands are good. He transitions well. This is his last fight. Look right here. He's got power in his hands, and when he decides to go after you, you better look out. Look at the heavy knees. That just almost took his head off of his shoulder. Sullivan Cully is explosive, strong, fast. He's got all the attributes, and he can even do a backflip. Uh, so he's hyper-athletic as well. <laughs> Artel right, tape for this, you just gotta be honest. Look at 4-0 versus 3-0. Everything, as far as everything else, really doesn't matter. Both these guys believe in themselves, have confidence, and both want to come out with the win. Despite just being in the embryonic stages of their careers, somebody's always already got to go. Let's go to Michael C. Williams. See, and I didn't do that. <laughs> Tonight here I did. at Wintross Arena, the Bellator 288 prelims go now to a featured fight in the light heavyweight division. Scheduled for three five minute rounds, we introduce the blue corner at six foot five, weighing in 205.6 pounds. His professional record three wins without a defeat. He fights out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Jay, the hybrid Raddick. And across the cage of adversary fighting out of the red corner at six foot three, weighing in 205.6 pounds as a professional. He too enters undefeated, bringing four wins without a loss. He fights out of Mesa, Arizona, Sullivan Coley. In charge, your referee Jason Herzog. Sullivan Cully, one of uh, Ryan Bader's main training partners, Bellator heavyweight champion, while Jay Erratic, his three victories also all coming in the first round. So this one could get lit very quick. And of course, we heard the news, Bader defending the heavyweight crown against Fedor in a rematch. 
Bellator MMA debuting on CBS Saturday, February 4th of next year as Braddock debuts a head kick in his first Bellator fight, backed up to the cage, immediately turning the tables on Colley. Very nice job of getting those double unders right away by Raddick, driving him to the cage. Not gonna be an easy takedown, especially with his hands where they're at. He's gotta get him very high or get him down low to the hips. Nice sweep of the leg. And the meat. Oh. Jump on the back. And just one little mistake. Gotten the mistake, and Colley's gonna make him pay. You now you do all that good work, you have that momentum going, and then just one thing, you try to you know, make that big leap. Big movements usually can result in big results, either good or bad. Yeah, he's already made the big leap of stepping into the belly. Oh, he's out. And he is out cold. Sullivan calling. Five and oh. Five knockouts. Mama mia. I talked about confidence hey, and the him. confidence that hey, Sullivan Colley has coming in here. On, he knows now. Here's the mistake. This is a beautiful outside trip, and then he tries to jump the back, and when he does, he falls to the ground off of it, and then Sullivan Colley takes over the top position, and that was part of the undoing right here. Watch the big shots here. Sullivan being able to control that hip position. Look him, watch him post, and as he posts right there, that big shot, he's out. That shot right there, that's the one that hurt him, and that one puts him out. A big time win by Sullivan Cully, who just put a tough fighter out unconscious. A Division I college wrestler who obviously has superlative striking and his a fan Sullivan Cauley supporters loud and proud as this light heavyweight on the rise remains unbeaten in the Bellator cage. Five consecutive first round knockouts. And Jay Raddick, good to see him back on his feet. They show each other respect. Two warriors getting in the cage, putting their unbeaten records on the line. And it ends in another KO victory for Sullivan Cully. Let's make it official with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it comes to an end suddenly. One minute, one second round, number one for the winner by knockout, Sullivan Curry. Let's go to Big John McCarthy, who will get a chan chance to speak to Sullivan Curry. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with your winner, Sullivan Cully. Sullivan, that fight started off fast. He got double unders on you. He tried that outside trip, and he tried to jump on your back, and that was the mistake that yeah. gave you the opportunity to get on top. Big, strong guy. He was fresh when he caught me with that body lock and the head position up against the cage. I was kind of stuck there for a second. You know what I mean? It's kind of had me pinned there. So I tried to be patient, wait for my little opportunity to slide out, and I got it. He tried to um, jump to my back, which you know, it can be risky against a guy like me who understands good position. He got off balance and saw my opportunity and seized it. When you got to the top position, it was a short right hand that actually hurt him bad, and then you put him away with the second shot. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know what's going on. I don't, I, tell, I don't think of myself as a crazy power puncher, but I keep touching these guys and they keep going out. <laughs> Go out he did. That was an impressive win. Who is it now? at 5-0 and oh coming in here. Who is it that you want next in this cage? So, Ryan Bader's fighting Fedor, beginning of February in LA. I want to be on that card. I don't care who it is. Put me on that card with my boy Bader. Sounds good to me. I look forward to seeing it. Congratulations on another big win. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Sullivan Cauley.
Only thing more impressive than Sullivan Cully's knockout streak is the work he does with the veteran first responder support group Guardian Revival, which runs different programs aimed at supporting the mental health of veterans and first responders. Hey, five fights tonight, five finishes. Sullivan Cully, five fights on his resume, five finishes, but we're not finished yet with the Bellator 288 prelims. Hey, Bellator Nation, follow us across a large array of digital platforms and stay up to date on everything you need to know. Like us on the Bellator Facebook page and see exclusive videos. Follow us and get instant updates on Twitter at Bellator MMA and get a chance to have your tweet live on the broadcast. See amazing pictures on Instagram at Bellator MMA. Join Bellator Nation today. The new Bellator MMA app is here. New look, new features, new fights. Watch live weigh-ins and prelims. Share your fight picks. Earn points and badges as you rank up to the heavyweight division. And stay up to date on events, rankings, and news. For all the latest features, download the new Bellator MMA app. Available on the App Store and Google Play. It's a clash of heads. The fight has been ruled a no contest. It's time to settle the score once and for all. The light heavyweight Grand Prix final is back on. Champ Vadim Nemkov versus Corey Overtime Anderson. Flux lightweight champ and tricky pitbull against undefeated Usman Nurmagomedov. Oh Bellator MMA tonight live on Showtime. Bellator 288 rolling on with the prelims. We are more than halfway done now, inching our way to tonight at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on Showtime. We will see you there. Two championship bouts on the card tonight between Vadim Nemkov and Corey Anderson, a rematch of their fight that we saw back in April. And then Patricky Pippel putting his lightweight belt on the line against Usman Nurmagomedov. But let's set you up with the first fight on our card. Roman Feraldo versus Levon Chokoli here. And Josh, I wanted to talk about Roman Feraldo because we just saw Sullivan Cully with another knockout. 5-0, five, oh, five knockouts. Roman Feraldo, this is his first time on the main card. 8-0, eight, oh, eight knockouts from him. I wanted to see some of his highlights here because he's called his shot. They've been so incredible. You and I, the past couple of times we've seen him, wanted to see him on the main card. Now we're going to see him tonight, but how does he stack up against a guy like Levon Chokley? Beat under the bright lights. He's been there several times and had great performances. And the way he sets up his combinations with his hands and then opens up for the flying knees is just spectacular. And I love that he understands this is the entertainment business and he is the entertainer. And he yells out to this crowd to let them know, are you not entertained? He does a fantastic job at promoting himself. He speaks really well and very, very creative on how he talks to his opponents. And he's just got them thinking and reeling from the moment they step on the scale against each other. He's, he's pulling fantastic. a Babe Ruth. Like, I mean, I would be terrified to be inside the cage with this guy. If he points at me, I think I'm going down there. Look, on the other side, Le'Veon Chokely. I mean, five knockouts, or excuse me, eight from Roman Feraldo there. We saw all those highlights. How does he try to combat that? Well, I think with Chokley, what he's got to do is just be very uh, cautious on the feet. But he's also a very, very good stand-up fighter as well. But after talking with him this week, he's going to look to mix it up. He's going to he's going to check and see if Feraldo can grapple. He's going to check and see if he's got good takedown defense. I think Chokley is a very well-rounded fighter. He's just got to get a rhythm going, stay relaxed out there, and just remember that even though you're on the main card, you're still out here to entertain. He's going to get out there and get after it. And Feraldo was very serious on the other side of that when he was talking to us. Look, he can be a smash talker he can have a lot of fun but he said look you haven't seen my full potential yet and I want to showcase that well he's got the pedigree of the guys that he works with at American top team you know Yaroslav Amosov 26 and 0 and our champion here at the welterweight division fantastic and he said look these guys just make me better iron sharp and iron and you see it in the cage every time he gets in there you make me better Josh thank you so I know much this. how about that that'll be like the first nice thing I say to you all night more I will send it back down to you all right, we continue with action in the Bellator 288 prelims from Wynn Trust Arena in Chicago, Illinois. And it's time for lightweight action. Archie Colgan, he is 5-0 and as a pro. He takes on Jesse Hanna, making his Bellator debut. And now to make his way to the cage, please welcome Jesse Big Rig Hanna.
26 year old Jesse Hannum making that walk for the first time to Bellator's circle of uh, truth and uh, comes in off a first round TKO win but that was in May of 2021 so it's been the big rig's been in the garage for a while John but has a wrestling background and, and again any chance you get to fight at this level on a card of this nature you want to make sure you give it your best performance ever well you got to take that opportunity when an opportunity is there and you've got that chance to go and be on that big card man you got to grab it but he has got a tough matchup with Archie Colgan Jesse lives off of being a very tough guy a good wrestler gritty in his performances he takes a lot of damage that keeps coming back we'll see if he can do that with Archie Colgan two biggest reasons Jesse Hannum is here his fiance and his son His opponent now to make his way, Archie King Colgan. Lots to like about this 27-year-old Archie Colgan. Again, record of 5-0, and three knockouts, one submission, coming off a TKO triumph over Brian Nuro in his last fight. And again, wrestling background, but in MMA, it's 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 impressive to see how quickly your background becomes you know in the background because you want to show off the rest of the mma right you know you get, you get uh, all excited about your hands and that's what he did when he fought against neuro here he lit neuro up throughout the fight he uses wrestling to be a defensive wrestler keep it on the feet when he wanted and then just took him apart with power shots opened up outstanding performance up in tacoma washington archie colgan is the real deal this guy can wrestle he can stand up and fight he has got a bright bright future very simply put take a look five and oh for archie colgan two and one for jesse big rig hannum both guys are very young in their career. This should be an outstanding battle. I mentioned Hannum being here for his fiance and his son. Well, Kogan's here for his beautiful wife and his handsome baby boy, as he puts <laughs> it. Speaking of handsome, let's go to Michael C. Williams. For all of you just picking up the live stream on YouTube and Pluto TV, we welcome you to Bellator 288 as we go now to three five-minute rounds in the lightweight division. Introducing the blue corner first at five foot eight, weighing in 155.8 pounds. His professional record two wins, one loss. He fights out of Ottawa, Iowa. Jesse Big Red Hannah. <clears throat> and across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner. At five foot eight, weighing in 154.8 pounds, he enters tonight undefeated at five and oh, he fights out of Denver, Colorado, presenting Archie K. Colgan. In charge, your referee, Mike Simarusti. Colgan looking to remain unbeaten. Well, Hannum looking to win his Bellator debut and knock Colgan right. from the ranks right. of the undefeated Bell and round one action in the Bellator lightweight division. So that nice little movement by Arch Colgan just dropping levels, changing levels, but he's making Jesse have to think about that shot coming in both as a wrestler and with his hands. And it was Hannah landing the first shot, the half kick to Colgan, but Colgan, both of them fainting, both of them using movement, level changes. There's a one-two that already drops Hannah, and immediately Colgan putting it on Jesse Hannum in the opening minute of the first round. Jesse Hannum's got to work his way back up. That's a beautiful, takedown. Beautiful mat return right there. And it is over. Striking, wrestling, perfect record. Archie Colgan making it look easy and highly impressive. And obviously, Jesse Hannum very frustrated about the turn of events as he was simply over.
overwhelmed. Too bad. Are we sure that Archie Colgan is in double park tonight? <laughs> yeah, I wanted to get out of that cage fast. You in a hurry? Look, I don't, I don't think that Archie hurt him with that first shot to put him down. I think that Jesse was a little bit off balance with it. He just couldn't get himself back out of the bad position. He was taking a lot of shots. The referee thought that, that was enough at a certain point. But you got to give it up. Archie, beautiful job. Went on top, started landing shots. That beautiful mat return took him back down. Take a look what happens here. There's that beautiful change of levels that is keeping Jesse off. And then Jesse throws the kick. He's off balance. He's not hurt. And here he's starting to get lit up and he tries to get back to his feet. And he does a good job of actually getting there. But once he does, right away, Archie grabs that body lock, puts him right back down, and then returns to just pounding on him. And nothing that Archie, as far excuse me, nothing that Jesse is doing is stopping the attack of Archie Colgan. And, and Hannum immediately contested the stoppage. He, it was an overwhelming uh, barrage. If you recall a fight earlier that that referee did let it go very long. Thank you. And many times you want to pull the trigger fast because all oh, you realize, oh, I should have stopped that one early, and this one gets a little stopped a little too soon. All righty, John McCarthy going to be stepping into the cage, not as a referee. You're going to be interviewing the victorious Archie Colgan, who will move to 6-0 and now with his fourth knockout. A representative of the Elevation fight team, Justin Salas, who gets to train with killers like Justin Gaethje. And... Well, this Elevation Fight Team product continues to elevate his game and his profile in the Bellator lightweight division. Let's make it official. Here is Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it comes to a conclusion. 50 seconds to new round number one. The winner by TKO Archie K. Well, King Colgan crowns Jesse Hannum in Hannum's Bellator debut. Big John McCarthy is inside the cage. I am lucky enough to be standing here with Archie Colgan, a man who is on fire now. That is a big win, quick 6-0. and oh. How are you feeling about your decision to become an MMA fighter now? I feel great. I, I felt great about it two years ago, and I feel even better now. You look so comfortable in this cage at this point. You were doing a beautiful job changing levels, just deciding when you wanted to attack with the hands. He was a little bit off balance when he went down, but you attacked him, Matt returned, and then just opened up on him again. Yeah, um, yeah, I have to go back and watch it and see exactly what happened, but you know, when he went down and, and I jumped on top, you know, the way he balled up was just almost like fetal, so I just uh, went to the attack. At 170 pounds, you have the wrestling, you have the power in your hands. We saw it in your last fight. Who is it that you want to take on next, if given the opportunity in this cage? Man, um, I guess early 23, right? That'd be what I'm looking at. There's, uh, you know, I took that fight, my last fight on three weeks notice against Montalvo. I'd be down to get that one. Um, and if we're climbing up the ranks, I don't know, somebody like Qualey would be cool too, so. There's a, there's a list of people, but we'll just see what uh, happens, and I'll be ready. February, Dublin, Ireland. Bellator's going back. Maybe we'll see Archie Colgan against Peter Quilly. Ladies and gentlemen, get up. Put your hands together for a man who is on fire, Archie Colgan. From a wrestling standout at University of Wyoming, where he wrestled for five years too well. A man who's turning into a bona fide knockout artist, although again, maybe, maybe, inquiring minds asking, was it a premature stoppage? John McCarthy put it best after what transpired earlier in the night. In any event, Archie Colgan yet to taste defeat, celebrating there with his team, and uh, he's made it clear he wants to continue to move on up, and they're enjoying it. Grant Neal in the house as well as we get ready for more Bellator prelim action. The, uh, well, the, the Finishes keep coming. The Bellator Bantamweight World Grand Prix features eight of the top 135ers in the world, all with their eyes on the $1 million prize. 
The quarterfinal action got underway at Bellator 279 with Patchy Mix taking on Kyoji Horiguchi. And Mix showed no love to the former Bantamweight champion as he advanced with a unanimous decision victory. I'm coming for that million. I'm coming for that belt. Then, in a showdown for the interim world title, Rafion Superstocks faced off against another former champion, Juan Archuleta. Oh. Oh. The Grand Prix action resumed at Bellator 282 with Magomed Magomedov facing Enrique Barzola. And he's tight. He's got his legs engaging that. There it is. He does it via guillotine choke in the fourth round. It will be Magomed Magomedov meeting Patchy Mix in the semifinals. The last quarterfinal matchup featured Danny Sabatello taking on Leandro Ego. The Italian gangster put on a clinic and dominated all five rounds to secure a unanimous decision victory. I want to say congratulations to Danny Sabatello because you won yourself an ass whooping. So congratulations! Stotts versus Sabatello at Bellator 289, December 9th, live from the Mohegan Sun Arena, only on Showtime. Speaking of the Bantamweight World Grand Prix, look who we have here. So here's the thing. I saw a little bling cage side, but really, I should have seen the taco meat. Hey, hey we in Chicago. It's a little Suns. cold. I got the taco meat out, and it's icicle tacos for everybody in the crowd. You know what I'm saying? We out here, baby. We out here. We are so excited to see you, our interim champ, getting ready for your fight coming up in December. We're less than a month away from Danny Sabatello. I know he's going to be here in a little while. You guys may have some words in the cage so people need to you know be ready for that but we're talking to you right now so yeah. you get to say everything how are you feeling ahead of december man i am so happy that we're only three weeks away you know i wish it was sooner i cannot wait to put my hands on this guy i can't wait to expose this guy i can't wait to see the look in his eyes when he realized he in there with rafi and stock and i'm 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 just salivating at the at, at the chance that you know uh hurting this dude you guys are must watch tv basically on social media back and forth with each other all of this stuff but now the talk is gonna have to start to come to a close we're getting closer how is closer how is camping going and what are the kind of the changes that you've been doing to prepare for someone who is a, a really good wrestler yeah so uh, for me I feel like I don't have to do anything that I haven't done before I fought really good wrestlers before I've wrestled at high-level programs before so what I got to do is just stick to being me and stick to fighting how I know I know how to fight you know Sabatello's got to do something unorthodox he's got to fight somebody or not unorthodox unorthodox to him he's got to fight somebody that's really good at wrestling who's ready for a uh, wrestling transition who can go you know shot for shot or uh, take down for takedown you know so it's the, 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 the honus is on him to, to, to change his game. I don't really got to change on it. I'm going to beat his ass just like I beat everybody else. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm, it's business as usual for me. So do you think you guys are the main event that night, December 9th at Mohegan? We're all going to be there watching you. Are we going to see rounds out of this? Are we going to see a quick finish? What do you think? I mean, that's all dependent on him because, I, like I said, I'm going to go out there and I'm trying to get him out there about, like, the second round, you know? I kind of want to see where he's at, but he also got one path to victory. Be better than me at wrestling, which I don't see. And if you if you try anything else, if you try to strike, if you try to, you know, submission grapple, I'm going to destroy you, bro. I'm going to destroy you. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I, I can't wait, bro. Can you promise me one thing? What? That you will not try any backflip? Ah! I don't know. I don't. If I if I knock him out with an elbow to the face, I'm gonna be pretty elated. But you and know, and I, my body just you know it just takes a hold. I don't know what's gonna happen. You know what I mean? But you know, right? If I something know goes wrong in that backflip, right? You're gonna miss out on that million dollars. Right. You know, I'll, I'll hold it off. I won't. I won't. You're right. I got I got a million dollars on the line. You're right. You're right. You're right. Josh. You ever stress somebody out? You're stressing <laughs> me out right now. You got me You're all right. stressed. You can't give, right. 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 give him more gray hair. We can't give him more gray hair. I'll hold off on the backflip, but I might 
hump somebody. I don't know. Who, who knows what'll come out? You know what I mean? If I don't do the backflip. What do you look out of him and you say, hey, that's something I really have to I have to be worried about and concerned about? Yeah, um, his wrestle, his wrestling is obviously, you know, his biggest threat. And then his cardio, his pace. You know, he's putting paces on guys. So that's that's pretty much what I gotta work out. I gotta be in phenomenal, be in phenomenal shape. You know what I mean? But um, and that's about it, man. That's all I see in this kid. This kid is not ready to fight me. You know, um, I'm just levels above him, and I can't wait to show everybody. My last question is, you you were going out to uh, Extreme Couture's. Are you there now, or are you going back yeah. over to Duke Rufus's? Where, where have you been? Yeah, so I've been in Houston, Texas. I've done my camp in Houston, Texas, but I've had uh, the likes of Eve Edwards, you know, running my camp. I know Eve's. Um, I've had the likes of Eric Nixick coming out to Houston for me, you know, which is like a, a blessing. You know, I'm, I'm just, I'm surrounded by a lot of the good people um, in Houston. So um, I got a training partner like Adrian Yanez, Cameron Smotherman, um, you know, so I, I have a really solid camp around me. I got a lot of wrestlers coming from uh, it's, it's some wrestlers who, who wrestled at the same school as him. I won't mention them. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so I got a lot of good looks, you know what I mean? Um, and, and, I'm, and I'm ready to show out. Final question for you. Leading up to this, how much has the trash talking been going down? What do you think of his trash talking? I mean, because it's pretty good. I don't know. Like, what do you think about it? Because you've been the target of it now for a couple months. Yeah, I, I like it. You know what I mean? I'm, like I say, I've been trying to trash talk people for a long time. Juan Archuleta called me a bully for trying to trash talk him. Maga Man, there was a language barrier there. Um, so I'm with it. You know what I mean? I've been waiting to talk crap about Daniela, you know, this whole time. Oh, no. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> Daniela Sabatella. I've been waiting to talk crap about him. So uh, I'm loving it. I'm living life, you know? It just, and it adds a little more, you know, um, we got more chips on the table, you know what I mean? So when it's when it's all said and done, you know, somebody's gonna get to walk off with those chips and somebody's not, you know what I mean? And that just that just builds another fire in me. Rafian, it has been a pleasure to have you as our interim champ here. And Danny Sabatello will be in the building tonight. Hey. Maybe we're gonna see you guys face off. Not really sure what's hey, gonna happen. Hey, stay tuned. Here. Who knows? If this mofo get in my face, who knows? Who knows what'll happen? You know what I'm saying? We in Chirac. Uh, who knows? Just stay tuned. What a better promo for what's going down tonight on Showtime, our main card coming up at 9 Eastern. All right, but on December 9th, looking ahead, there they are, Rafian Stotts, Danny Sabatello. The Bellator Bantamweight World Grand Prix continues the trash talking. It will be elite. These guys are the main event that night, and whoever wins punches their ticket to the final to try to win a million dollars. A million dollars also on the line tonight in our main event here with Dean Nemkov going up against Corey Anderson, the finale of the light heavyweight world championship, a rematch of their fight back in April. And on the co-main event, Patricky Pitbull putting his lightweight belt on the line up against undefeated 15-0 Usman Nurmagomedov. Which family will either keep the belt or add yet another belt to their name? Pitbull has the power to end the fight at any point. And it's all over just like that. But Tricky Pitbull. He's walking up a foot choke on him. And there it is in scintillating fashion. He is a supreme striker. He's got unbelievable wrestling, and his grounded pound is nasty good. The maiden voyage for Patricky Pitbull as lightweight champion against the undefeated number one ranked contender Usman Nurmagomedov, our co-main event later tonight. Hey, speaking of the lightweight division, the 13-3 Kilis Mata takes on the 7-0 Jairo Pacheco, who makes his Bellator MMA debut. And now, ready to make his way to the cage, Jairo. Pacheco! Twenty-five year old Gyro Pacheco cognizant of the fact you get one chance to make a first impression and already displaying confidence, soaking up the moment before stepping into the Bellator cage for the first time. 
seven and zero, John, with two knockouts, two submissions. Did uh, six semesters in college for physical education, but decided, you know what? I want to get physical inside the cage and make a living as a mixed martial artist. You know, I could believe that he had a, a background in physical education. This guy is an athlete. He is very fast. He's strong. He's explosive. The real question is, does he have the experience necessary to not make the big mistakes that I've seen him make at times that he's gotten away with in his early fights? You go and you come up in the levels, someone against like Keely's Moda, you got to be careful. But this guy is explosive. When he, when he wants to go after someone, look out. Trains with UFC's middleweight Andre Muniz, one of his main training partners at Top Top Fight Team in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, the bane of uh, Jacare's existence. Oh, yeah, I'll tell you what, Andre Muniz is a, a submission master. And, uh, well, Pacheco has two submissions on his record. So, another look at a Bellator MMA debutante as we await the arrival of his opponent, Kilis Mata, who is fighting for the fifth time in Bellator. And now set to make his way, Kilis Mata. Kilis Mata showed what he's made of in snapping the first two-fight losing streak of his career, earning a hard-fought victory over Dan Moret at Bellator 288 this past June. Gave uh, Moret a lot of respect, but in the end, it was 30-27 uh, across the board. What impresses you most about this fighter from ATT in Coconut Creek, Florida? Well, he's from ATT now. He used to be with Glover Teixeira up in Danbury, Connecticut, but I have seen an improvement out of Keeley since his time down at ATT. Look, this guy is very good and fluent in that stand-up game. He's when I say fluent, he's so smooth, he's calculated, and he's got very, very fast and hard kicks. And as the fight hits the ground, you're talking about a guy who's outstanding on the ground. He's got a very effective ground game. He goes after the submission, and he's got beautiful base and balance on top. Take a look at that 76-inch reach. That is huge for a lightweight. Achilles Moe is going to have to get past that. He's going to try to use his kicks since he's only at 71. With the official introductions, here is Michael C. Williams. And we welcome once again all those joining us late night across the UK live on BBC iPlayer as we go now here in Chicago to three five-minute rounds in the lightweight division. Introducing the blue corner at six foot, weighing in 155.6 pounds, undefeated as a professional. He stands with seven wins, no losses from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, presenting Jairo Pacheco. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner at five foot eleven, weighing in 155.6 pounds as a professional. 13 victories, three defeats from Registro Sao Paulo, Brazil, presenting Kiles Mota. In charge, your referee Jason Herzog. Achilles Mata, five wins via first round knockout or submission, three KOs, two subs. Pacheco literally still trying to fight out of the favela he was ready? raised in, in Rio fight. de Janeiro. He knows a win here tonight will change his family's life. It's quite a bit of motivation right there. Pacheco told us that he would let his hands and feet do the talking for him here in this fight. And it's Mata who delivers the first strike. There's a T-foot push kick to the midsection by Pacheco. And both of them using their feet to begin this fight. And there's a one-two through the guard for 
Mata. Yep, that was a very good low calf kick that you saw Pacheco hit on a with. He needs to go back to that as often as he can. And as you mentioned in the tail of the tape, it's going to be Pacheco looking to utilize his length advantage and already showcasing a very educated right foot there. I think the uh, degree comes from DePaul University. That's <laughs> basketball team play here at Winchester Arena. There's a jab, nice counter from Mata. Both deliver kicks. There's oh, a lead left uppercut. Immediately Mata looks for the level change in the takedown. Well defended thus far by Pacheco. Yeah, Mata got into him on that. That was a nice body shot that Pacheco ended up landing, but Mata now into that. He's just trying to get those hands classed together. Good job by Pacheco to not allow that to happen. And the jockeying for position continues in the clinch, and there's Mavriter by Mata from the waist lock right into side control. That's not an easy thing to do when you get a guy with that body lock, and they're really long, and they're going to drag their feet on the ground. Very difficult sometimes to get him down. That was a great job by Achilles to actually elevate him up and get this thing to the mat. Both of them in the in their respective careers and uh, Mata with more experience more than twice as many fights as the 7 and 0 oh, Pacheco but they've uh, well rounded some knockouts some submissions still gaining a lot of experience and here Pacheco neutralizing the hands of Mata yeah Pacheco now really doing that but he's put himself in a position now He's now turned away from the cage. Now he can't utilize that cage to get himself back to his feet. So there's, you got to look, and this is what we're talking about. How smart are you going to be? Oh, hammer oh, fist. Very clean hammer fist Mata by Achilles. Ground and pound, and so Mata now having freedom with his hands begins to punish Pacheco. Achilles Mata hitting very heavy shots. You could see how they had an instant effect on Pacheco. Under two minutes left here in the opening round. Beautiful, nice job by Achilles Mata to close in with that leg, put it on the arm. You see that baseball grip that Pacheco is using to try to keep Achilles off of him. Nice technique. 90 seconds here in the opening round. Mata working from the half guard top position. And Pacheco against the fence trying to find a way to get out from underneath the pressure and the smothering attack of Achilles Mata. Seatbelt. Pacheco needs to keep that, that hand as far as you see him posting. He needs to post off of that hand. You see. Mata trying to reach out and grab a hold and lace that arm back. Under a minute now left in the first round and Mata with the positional advantage on Pacheco. Pacheco trying to keep Mata from unleashing another attack. Mata able to deliver a couple of right hands to Pacheco's body. And of course Pacheco John wearing the weight of Mata, the, the mental physical pressure the grinding attack and so for Pacheco already facing adversity in the first five minutes of his Bellator MMA career. And then you know, coming into a new organization, it is not easy. You want to perform so well and you're just trying to make sure that, you know what, I stay in this fight right now. Pacheco needs to just take his time, keep himself safe, get himself out of the round. Lightweights, Mata Pacheco, end of one. Eu quero uma respiração. Olha só. E enche esse pulmão de ar, esse ombro lá em cima, para a gente se controlar. Exatamente. Some nice moments. That low calf kick right there by, by Pacheco. That was really nice. Beautiful defense by Achilles. Nice movement of the head off. But once Achilles Mata was able to get and elevate him off of that body lock, it was not 
anything going well for Pacheco for the rest of the round. He took some big shots. He, he did keep himself safe, getting himself to the next round. Crowd still filing in Wintrust Arena, hosting its first ever Bellator MMA event. And uh, what a night during the prelims. We've had six fights thus far with six finishes. We're about to go into round number two of this lightweight encounter between Achilles Mata in the red gloves in the debuting, Jairo Pacheco in the blue gloves, and immediately both of them storm to the center of the cage, fainting. It's Pacheco delivering the kick. And again, Pacheco delivering multiple kicks with either foot, John. And, and doing a nice job of bringing them down low, up high. He's mixing it up. There's a right hand from Mata through the guard. Oh, that was a nice clean hand. Balls in, looking for the takedown, and was successful on one of two occasions in that opening round and able to put Pacheco on his back early in the second stanza. Look at what Mata is telling you is, all right, I felt what you are like down there. I understand how good you are, and I believe that I'm better. And he's taking him back there because now he can do damage while he doesn't get damaged himself. This is what makes Achilles Mata a good fighter. He's fighting smart. That's, that is fight IQ saying, why am I going to be in the stand-up with a guy that's so long, so rangy? Mata been a pro since 2013. Pacheco a pro since 2018. And again, we talk about the experience edge and for Pacheco, who we've talked about it, John, athletic, physically strong, and trying to be active off his back here. Hammer fist from Mata, but again, Pacheco trying to create something. He tried to create, you saw him reach in for that leg, but you saw right away Mata took and clamped down on that hand. There was no way for Pacheco to upset that balance, and that's why you saw Mata able to land that big hammer fist. Speaking of big hammers, Mata getting to work with the likes of Steve Mako at uh, ATT's Coconut Creek. Anybody who knows about Steve Mako, man, that was a mean wrestler. <laughs> he, he liked to hurt people when he was wrestling. And now he's a great, about us great, we're laughing. A, great coach at ATT, though. A sadistic SOB. Yes, he was. I think I was and, about and maybe, it maybe still is. <laughs> All right, Mata, no laughing matter here for Mata and Pacheco. Again, every moment in the cage counts. You are, again, especially for Pacheco, we've already documented the fact that as we speak, his family remains in the favela, no, the ghetto of Rio de Janeiro. And, and we've seen so many fighters emerge from abject poverty to become legends. Absolutely. The, the, the latest, if you're going to look at someone that grew up in the favela, Charles Oliveira. Yep. Well, look at what he's done. He has is, is just been fantastic. Well, this crowd obviously has been spoiled tonight. We've documented the fact that every fight has ended inside the distance and not happy with the static display of uh, Mata on top of Pacheco, who is sitting against the fence. As you see Mata with that figure four on those legs, you, when you see those feet up off of the mat, there's no way that Pacheco is going to get himself up from this way. He's got to get his feet free. He's got to at least get one down to, to the ground so he can start to turn over to get his knee to the ground, use his hands. Somebody in the building tonight is very good at doing what uh, Mata has done. Uh, the Eagle uh, had a pretty decent career, I think. Not bad. Not bad career at all. And Mata looking to put what well, does have the hook in, but Pacheco seems to be stymied, John. He's having a hard time just with all the elements coming together to get himself back to his feet. He tried doing the, the submission game out in the middle of the mat. That didn't work for him. Now he's got himself with his back to the cage, but he has not figured out how to get his legs clear so he can get himself back to his feet. And he's, all, he's looking for help from the referee. That's never a good sign. Opportunity to get to his feet here and uh, Mata with the waist lock, back elbows being delivered to the face by Pacheco. Mata puts one hook in, trying to flatten out Pacheco perhaps. Under a minute left in the second. And again, you can see Pacheco looking up at Jason Herzog. Is, quit looking at him. He's not your friend. He's not there to help you. Get yourself out. And there's knees being buried into the thigh. 
The right thigh of Jairo Pacheco now on his feet, coming up on 30 seconds left in the second. But Mata makes sure he doesn't stay on his feet long. Well, he didn't land too well on that either. That, his head got a little torqued underneath him. That's a lot of weight coming down. We see Mata put in the one hook, John, but and unable to take it much further. He's trying a, to just neutralize Pacheco. Let's just be honest. Pacheco obviously has very big hands, and he's been able to risk control Mata to the point where Mata has no idea how to really get his hands clear. Escute o que eu vou falar para você. Quero que você respire primeiro. Antes de tudo, me dá só aquela ombrada lá em cima. E voltou. Mais uma vez para mim. Olha só. Ele vai vir correndo atrás do prejuízo nesses cinco minutos. Central, pum, entrada de encontro com a tua mão, entrada de encontro com o teu joelho. Tá? É isso. Bota a mão, movimenta. Sai para um lado, sai para o outro. Sai para um lado, sai para dois rounds para ele. Mas ainda tem luta. Ele não te aguenta em pé. Ele já te agarrando com um desespero. Ele tá te agarrando muito desespero, tá fazendo a luta mais feia da história, entendeu? Porrada nesse cara agora, vamos machucar ele, ok? Vamos machucar ele, mais um round, é teu. Hey, it's a, it's a balmy Friday night in the windy city of Chicago. A 21 degrees! Oh, balmy. It's not Celsius, see? I thought it was Canadian where I'm from, but Fahrenheit 21, I guess, not so warm. <laughs> no, not quite. <laughs> but a beautiful city, one of the most iconic skylines, and a beautiful building, this Wind Trust Arena, as uh, Achilles Mata and Jairo Pacheco engage in action here. They both come out chucking leather, and we talk about Pacheco background hey Mata fought his way out of the the same favelas in Brazil and now he's taking Pacheco for a ride and putting him on, on his back and in my opinion Pacheco has got to figure out something in this round he's got to become offensive he's got to do some damage he's got to finish in my opinion right now he's got to finish Killis Mata if he wants to get the win Pacheco trying to control Mata's hand a minute gone here in the final round and every second that ticks off the clock one second closer to well Pacheco tasting defeat here in the Bellator cage and not a defeatist attitude by any means but frustrated for sure the body language even there like you say it almost looks like he's waiting for the referee to do something yeah and you you take a look and you go look at this point his coach knows he should know look you're way behind in this fight an L's an L man you gotta go for it open up if he ends up you know taking your back and you end up getting put out of this fight okay but don't sit there and just let the time run by because you don't have a lot of time. Nice job by Achilles. If, you, if you're seeing that, that arm is trapped now in that leg. You see his right arm. That glove is pinched between the thigh and the calf of Achilles Mata. That is not a good position for him. He's got his left hand to help him protect himself. But if Achilles realizes it opens up with that left hand, now he's got the arm free. Midway through the final round, and Pacheco needs to try to find a way to get back on his feet, back into this fight. Cannot accept this position, and again, much easier said than done when you have Khalees Mata on top of you, working from half guard. And again, Mata with the figure four around both of Pacheco's legs. 
and that will take away the base and any escape route, John. No, not right now. Not with where his legs are at. He is not going to get himself up. He has got to free those legs. He's got to push on the hips, shimmy those legs out of that position so he can at least get one leg down on the ground, get a knee there, start to build a base so he can get back to his feet. Now you're seeing Mata lace that left arm. That is not a good position. He's breaking him down, climbing up on top. Nice job by Achilles Mata. This is good fighting. And again, you're seeing Pacheco, yeah, Pacheco look towards the referee. Leading with the ref, it's only he wants to have, him to blame. He, he, want, I mean, he, he wants to have a friend in there, and there is none. And Mata, and again, look, the, Mata obviously doing enough on top from that dominant position, and for him as well, coming back after a two-fight losing streak, beating Dan Moret via unanimous decision. An opportunity here to try to maybe close the show in the final minute. And look, he's taking on a guy that was an undefeated fighter coming in. This guy with a lot of confidence having a chance to actually prove himself in this fight. So, you know, Pacheco came in here, guns ablaze and wanting to get rid of Achilles until he's done a great job of shutting all that down. Achilles Mata, four for seven in the takedown department. Outlanding Pacheco, 51 to 18 in terms of total strikes. And the, the streak of finishes at Bellator 288 comes to an end for the first time. <laughs> the judges are earning their keep. Judges finally get to say something. And Mata goes the distance for the third time in a row. Aging two, two last four. America top team. Rest today, rest today. America top team. For Pacheco, is, goes the distance for the first time in three fights. And John, uh, the, I mentioned the numbers. Let's dig a little deeper. Yeah, you can take a look. You know, 51 strikes landed to 19 here. When you're looking at the big difference, 11 minutes and 35 seconds of ground control to absolutely zero, four takedowns. This came down to a battle of ground position, and Achilles Mata was the guy that took that. Brazilian fighters looking to, again, escape their impoverished backgrounds and <laughs> not the easiest line of work by any stretch of the imagination. And they uh, was a grinding, suffocating affair here tonight with Achilles Mata utilizing his wrestling and, as you mentioned, John, his positional control to control Pacheco for the majority of this fight. All right, the man who's in position to identify the winner is Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance for the first time, tonight we'll go to your judges' scorecards where all three judges, Brian Pacello, Mike Bell, Scott Jones, all have it exactly the same at 30 to 27, all for the winner by unanimous decision, Killing. Malta. Achilles Mata, ever the sportsman, raising the hand of Jairo Pacheco, who takes defeat for the first time. Two compatriots in a grueling match between Achilles Mata, who is now 14 and 3, 3 and 2 in Bellator, and for Jairo Pacheco, tasting bitter defeat for the first time. Conan Silvera looking to mark this moment for posterity.
Hey, Bellator Nation, follow us across a large array of digital platforms and stay up to date on everything you need to know. Like us on the Bellator Facebook page and see exclusive videos. Follow us and get instant updates on Twitter at Bellator MMA and get a chance to have your tweet live on the broadcast. See amazing pictures on Instagram at Bellator MMA. Join Bellator Nation today. From the gym to the streets, Bellator fans head to bellatorshop.com and gear up in the same apparel the fighters wear. Chicago, you are beautiful, but very, very cold. It's about 20 degrees outside here in Chicago, Illinois tonight, but inside the Wintrust Arena, where we are for Bellator 288, things are scorching hot. Our prelims have been absolutely incredible, and tonight, a main card headlined by the light heavyweight Grand Prix final between Vadim Nimkov and Corey Anderson. It is a rematch of a fight we saw back in April that was ruled no contest. These two guys have had it. 217 days to prepare for tonight. The gauntlet for glory begins here in our light heavyweight world Grand Prix. Jab lands again. This time he drops Davis. Nefkov pouncing on Phil Davis. A still Bellator light heavyweight world champion. to the semifinals. Ground and pound! Semifinals are underway. This is what we meant when you said you can't stay down there. That's it. Nepkoff opening up, and Kleskis has to move. Nice, Cabrera. Yeah, and that's it. That's how you say, and still. between Corey over Tommy Anderson and Vadim Nimkov. Fans never like to see no contest. They weren't too excited about it. One of these fighters, though, Vadim Nimkov, maybe he is excited about a chance for a second shot at that belt because, Josh, up until that point, Corey Anderson was winning that fight. Vadim Nimkov told us this week, he said, look, his American style of wrestling, I thought I was ready for it. I wasn't ready for it. So he went ahead. He went to Florida for five weeks to work with American wrestlers to get ready for tonight. Is that going to be enough against a guy like Corey Anderson? Well, that's why we fight the fight. We're going to find out tonight if it was enough. But he was working with Johnny Evelyn, who is now our middleweight champ here in Bellator. Dalton Rasta, undefeated fighter as well. Austin Vanderford, he's got one loss, but he's also a fantastic wrestler. So he's got a good mix of great wrestlers that are in that American top team. Let's see if that makes a difference. When it comes to Corey Anderson, as I mentioned, look, he was winning that fight. You said earlier today for Vadim Munkov, he just needs to wipe the slate clean. He's to consider this a brand new fight. Corey Anderson, is this more round four for him? How does he not lose the momentum he had in that one? Well, Vadim can't take much away from that first fight. He didn't, he didn't perform very well. The leg kicks were working for him in the first, but in this situation, he's got to wipe that slate clean and move on to a new fight. Corey Corey Anderson wants to pick up where he left off, right into round four. Get into the conversation of, look, I've got to make sure that I don't come in overconfident, cocky, arrogant. I've got to make sure that I come in prepared for whatever he brings, that I can deliver the same type of performance that I did in the first fight. Get in his face, land some big shots, but don't forget that I'm a wrestler. 
He said this week that Vadim Nimkov, um, he calls him a hot pocket, says he comes out pretty hot and he's got to wait for him to cool down and that's when he's going to make his move. But that's the style of Corey Anderson. He will get in your face, make you fight uncomfortable positions, and when he gets on top, he delivers the most vicious ground and pound. And that's all he's got to do. Just remember that. Don't come in too confident. It's going to be an incredible fight. That is our main event tonight. Two championship fights on the card, 9 Eastern on Showtime. Morrow, back to you, friend. Hey, Amanda, nice to see JT displaying that hot pocket square. Purple looks good on him, I got to admit. Main event for the prelims as we've got Imam Shafi Ali taking on Sean Connor Fallon. It's the middleweights to close out the prelim portion of Bellator 288. And now to make his way to the cage, Sean Connor Fallon. Sean Connor Fallon. He hopes that Bellator MMA will prove to be the house of his rising son as a mixed martial artist, Johnny. Uh, he is making his Bellator debut. Hey, work with me, John. Sometimes you gotta, gotta work with what we're given. 16 and seven, but of those 16 victories, 10 via submission. He's on a three fight win streak. All three of those wins by tap out. Yeah, and he's won eight of his last nine fights. And yeah, I talked to him. You know, at the hotel, and he says, hey, I, I know everyone's saying I'm the underdog. I know that everyone's believing in all the Dagestani stuff. He goes, but I'm telling you, John, stand by. I'm going to submit this man. So we'll see. I love when a man has confidence. I love when someone comes in there believing in themselves because that is half the battle as you step into the cage. And Sean Fallon has that confidence. His athletic credentials include four years of college football at Buffalo State a defensive end and so hopes to continue his win streak and if he had his brothers would like to continue reeling off submission wins as well and now to make his way to the cage Imam Shafi Ali meanwhile Imam Shafi Ali also fighting for the first time in the Bellator cage and he comes to the promotion with an 8 and 0 record five finishes three knockouts two submissions just like our light heavyweight champion Vadim Nemkov who will be running it back with Corey Anderson in our main event a combat sambo champion and, and John for for those uninitiated you know there's a lot of similarities but combat sambo and MMA a nice a nice starting point absolutely when you're taking a look at you know that build up combat sambo big difference okay they have a different type of gi top on headgear but man they go after it with all the submissions strikes everything it is a beautiful precursor to the world of mixed martial arts and what you've seen out of this youngster you've seen him go at it oh i have seen him go at it let me just, he is very relaxed and calm in the cage and that is why he's so good he doesn't panic he knows when he needs to get the takedown. He's very good with it, and he's stifling from the top position. How rare for a Dagestani fighter. <laughs> Tell it for this middleweight matchup. Just take a look. Eight no right now for a leave. 16 and seven. But be cautious when you're in there with Fallon. He is a very good submission fighter. Will it be experience or will youth be served? Time to hear from Michael C. Williams. Tonight here in Chicago, the time has come to conclude the Bellator 288 prelims, and we'll do it right now with three five-minute rounds in the middleweight division. Introducing first the blue corner. That's six foot two, weighing in 185.6 pounds. His professional record: 16 wins, seven losses. Presenting Sean Connor. Across the cage is adversaries fighting out of the red corner at six foot weighing in 185.8 pounds as a professional. He's undefeated, eight victories, no defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Imam Shafi Ali. And the referee in charge, Kevin McDonald.
Alive. Fallon. Set to, to close things out. Here at the Bellator 288 prelims and Fallon working with Corey Anderson. Anderson has uh, moved to the Indianapolis area, joined Fallon's team. So Fallon gets to uh, sharpen his iron with some great iron in the form of Corey Anderson and Fallon coming forward here on a leave. Yeah, Fallon really trying to utilize that jab, keeping it in his face. Nice right hand over the top by Alif. Counter it. Right by Alib, and Fallon goes for the kick, caught by Alib, trip, takedown, and Alib looking to pass guard, but rubber guard employed immediately by Fallon. Again, we talk about Fallon's pedigree, all about the submissions, John Berry, comfortable on his back, but Alib looking to make him as uncomfortable as possible. And if you take a look at that position right there, Alib is in, he's in a great position to get an arm triangle if he can get past those legs. Beautiful shoulder pressure. You're seeing that shoulder in that throat area of Sean Fallon. That is not comfortable. And don't worry about the guillotine. It is not there right now. Alive coming off his first arm triangle choke win in his last fight. That was in August of this year. That was nice of Sean Fallon to get him back to guard, but right away you saw leave. And Step over it, ride it back into half guard. It's funny, we, we have uh, Alib who's going for an arm triangle, comes off his first arm triangle choke win. Now Fallon was I, I, obviously not in a position there, but the guillotine attempt coming off a guillotine choke win. But here's a creative uh, effort here by Fallon off his back. And what you're seeing is Alib is feeling that neck pressure because there is pressure on his neck and he's trying to back himself out. You don't have an actual submission here, but what you do have is a crank on that neck. It's not comfortable. Alib relieves of the pressure, but Fallon continues to control, try to control the head from the close guard. Well, all that was good by Sean Fallon because, you know, he utilized that to get himself from that half guard back into a full guard, which opens up his submission game. Fallon, a BJJ brown belt. Alib felt he had an advantage on the ground despite Fallon's credentials and now Fallon busted open. Fallon knowing he's been cut gets up and starts firing punches. Yeah, that was a clean right elbow that opened him up. And Alib take down but Fallon looking to attack the neck again but yeah, an elbow just cutting Fallon open. And now a Pollock painting beginning to form on the back of Imam Shafi Ali. Ali just driving forward. Beautiful job, getting position, bringing his hands, getting good shoulder pressure. Right now his head's in that position, but it's not in danger. Stop! Stop! Time! Referee Time. calls timeout to have the cut inspected. Let's go over there. You go over here. And as John mentioned, an elbow Stop. strike, legal strike, opening hey. the cut. Over here. Yeah, let's take a look at that elbow strike right here. You're going to see him just take it. He's going to swing his elbow straight through. Beautifully done. Outstanding technique by Ali. Watch how it comes right down the middle. There's no way for Fallon to truly block it. It just opens up that cut. A well-placed elbow. That's beautiful technique. Doctor trying to staunch the bleeding there, and of course, if he is unable to, or they determine that he is unable to continue due to the cut, it would go down as a TKO victory for Imam Shafi Ali, who nailed him with an elbow, and that's exactly what's happened, John. So, an elbow leads to a Bellator MMA victory for Imam Shafi Ali, now 9-0 with his fourth TKO, and you gotta feel 
for Sean Connor Fallon losing that way. I, I, you know he wants to continue, but oh, no. it's up to the doctor. No doubt about that. But, but you know, I want people to see, watch how this elbow is thrown, because when we talk about an elbow being thrown the right way, watch how he places his hand right through the middle and turns the arm over, bringing it straight down, bone on bone. That is just a beautiful technique, the way he did that. He didn't swing it to the outside, and that's why it landed as clean as it did. Just a beautifully executed technique by Aliv. Nothing that Fallon could do. And the fact, the fact that, you know, they're going to stop it, I understand. Another undefeated fighter representing the school of the late Abdulmanap Nurmagomedov. And Imam Shafi Aliv hopes to climb all the way to the top here in Bellator MMA's middleweight division. <laughs> Of course, Johnny Eblen will have something to say about anyone who tries to <laughs> knock him off the summit after that incredible win over a living legend in Gegard Mousasi. But tonight, in this moment, Imam Shafi Alib successful in his Bellator debut. Let's make it official with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, upon the advice of the cage side of, uh, physician, referee Kevin McDonald, due to the cut, waves off the contest officially. Three minutes, 20 seconds, round number one. The winner by TKO, Imam Shafi Ali. Imam Shafi Ali setting the table when it comes to a victory tonight for the School of Abdul Manap Nurmagomedov, of course, teammate Usman Nurmagomedov will challenge Patriki Pitbull later tonight for the Bellator Lightweight Championship. And uh, let's take a look at what's coming your way at the top of the hour on Showtime. A double main event, two title fights. Vadim Nemkov, light heavyweight champion, runs it back with number one contender Corey Anderson in the $1 million final of the light heavyweight Grand Prix. Patriki Pitbull makes the maiden voyage of his lightweight title reign and defends against the undefeated number one contender, Usman Nurmagomedov, who is competing in his first five-round fight. Former two-time featherweight title challenger, number seven ranked Daniel Weichel, participating in his 56th professional fight. He takes on newcomer Timur Hizriev, who is 11 and 0. Action in the heavyweight division sees number five ranked Tyrell Fortune take on Daniel James, who won his pro debut in Bellator, returns eight years later to try to tame Fortune. And a guaranteed barn burner to kick things off. Knockout artist Roman Feraldo, ranked number 10, Levon Chokoli. 17 of their 18 combined wins have come via form of knockout. Win Trust Arena in Chicago will be rocking. Join us for Bellator 288, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on Showtime. It's a clash of heads. The fight has been ruled a no contest. It's time to settle the score once and for all. The light heavyweight Grand Prix final is back on. Champ Vadim Nemkov versus Corey Overtime Anderson. Flux lightweight champ and tricky pitbull against undefeated Usman Nurmagomedov. Oh
MMA fans love watching fighters who leave it all inside the cage. But when a fighter has no quit in them, it's the role of the referee to step in. This is critical moments seen clearly by Peak. Athletes accept that injuries can happen at any moment. At the world famous Madison Square Garden, Chandler tried to fight his way through a kick to the perennial nerve against a relentless premise. Despite the champ's resilience, decisive decision making from the referee protected him from more serious damage. When you see Chandler moving around and then stepping and folding his ankle over. The referee is now concerned that the fighter cannot intelligently control his own body and be able to continue on in the fight in a safe way. What you're looking for the referee to do is give him some time to try to get it back to a normal position and Michael was never able to get to that position. That's why he ended up stopping the fight. And just like a referee in the fight, Peak is here to keep you safe on the road. Peak. Performance you can see. Don't go backwards, but circle out. Oh, big, big shot, shot from Corey Anderson. Bader immediately covers up. See who takes control of this first round. Oh, there's your answer. It is all over. Just like that. And then the bull 93 proof rum that's edgy to the core. Bang! Oh. Right hand right on the chin. And Felipe lands his eyes wide shut. Great stoppage by John McCarthy, but look at the placement on that right hand. Head snaps on the mat. Look at this. Eyes are cloudy. Just enough to see this punch coming, and that is it. Bader needs to think about really just using his footwork. Circle out. Don't go backwards, but circle out. Oh, big, big shot from Corey Anderson. Bader immediately covers up. And swing it for the fences, swing it for the finals, swing it for that title shot that's eluded in his entire career. Lands a big right elbow, the ground and pound pouring down, and it's over. Watch what happens. Beautiful head movement, and that right hand catches Bader right behind the ear. It disrupts him. He goes into a shell. He tried to get himself out. Watch the right hand. Corey moves his head off center line. Beautiful right hand right behind the ear on Bader. And you see him starting to show up. He did try to move himself to try to grab the body and control Corey Anderson. And he just was unable to do it. When you are hit with a shot like that, it disrupts your patterns. That you think, oh, just do this. It's almost impossible. Big time finish by Corey Anderson just going after him. That is a huge win, the biggest of Corey Anderson's career. And, and that's what Josh is so good at. He's, he gives you so many different looks. He switches stance. Oh, nice left hand. Man, Pitbull, when he turns it over. Oh, that's it's it. over. It's, over. it's, it's over. a weapon and it's done. The biggest win of his life, Patricky Pitbull. because I don't know what I'm looking at. Look here. at it here. He catches him first with a body shot and then a left hand over the top. That, oh, knocked that, off, that knocked him off balance. That was the first shot that knocked him off okay. balance. That wasn't the finishing blow. He sits up here and take a look at it, Shale. Sets him up. Bang! Oh, you're right. Right hand uppercut to the chin. Josh Thompson is done. That was just icing on the cake. Look at it here. Sets him up, catches him coming in. Bang! Yeah. Oh, right wow. on the chin. You know what that looks like to me? That looks like Dan Henderson, Henzo Grace. Okay, Pat Casey is hurt. You can see him. Look at his legs. He's starting to, he's starting to stiffen his legs out. He's starting to have some problems. Oh, this could do it. It is all over. Just like that. And then Peraldo says, oh, I see that you're hurt. Let me finish this off. He knows that Casey likes to drop his head down. Doesn't hit him clean, but enough to really hurt an already hurt fighter, Josh. Yeah, but John, the key to that, that flying knee was it landed right behind the knee. As you can see right, right there, the boom, right behind the ear. Sorry. It's all right. behind I got the it. There was a flying knee behind the knee. Just, got it. just beautiful positioning. Ooh. And oh, watch the listen to it at high speed. Beautiful job by Florida. His brother Tyree, a winner by split decision earlier tonight. Tyrell turning it on, looking to finish. And it is all over. Tyrell Fortune is a no. Watch the straight right. Straight down the pipe, touches him. 
You can see that sets Anyangwu back on his heels, drives him into the fence, and from that point, off of that straight right hand, things started going downhill fast for Zhu Anyangwu. See Tyrell just 156. cutting the angle on him, coming straight, landing the knee, big right hand, multiple shots, finish it, get the referee to step inside. Guts and the crit oh, on full display for this 34-year-old who is facing a man who is intent to being the future at 155. And an exchange along the fence as Colgan unloading on Neuro. Neuro goes down for the right. Referee steps in and Archie Colgan on his birthday lights up Brian Neuro like candles and blows him away. And then the finish right here. Watch the... Dirty boxing, grabs the neck, big right hand, left hand, but watch his set up. The right hand comes over. That is a big shot. Neuro's on his butt. Referee has seen enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He doubled up and then tripled up. And now backs it up. That beautiful left jab, right hand. That gets Jeffrey's attention. Now he starts to push him back. The knee comes up. That one misses. But once he gets the head, gets this nice plumb. Yeah, the tie plumb. He comes up right there. He is in trouble and he lands There's one more. One. But it wasn't even needed. But he does have that underhook, that far side underhook. That would have helped him get out, but now he's trapped, trapped right again in this crucifix position. You gotta stay moving, Blue. You gotta stay moving. Away with elbows and left hands to the face of Bronco Busek, unable to intelligently defend himself. His arms neutralized. How much more is the referee going to allow? Newman now continues to meet out punishment. He's in real trouble right now. Look at where the head placement of Newman is. That arm is trapped, so now it's a matter of just raking elbows down on the face. This fight is not going to make it out of this round if he cannot get his arm free. Move, move, move. That's a lot of hard shots just to the side of the head. A masterpiece of malevolence here on the part of Jordan Newman and the referee, John English, has seen enough. Jordan Newman improves to 3 and 0. Oh. Textbook boxing, it's all about the jab and Keith Lee trying to bring it to the ground. And yet it's Mubal again attacking the net. Attacking the net, but there's no legs in place. But he couldn't get this to work. Right now, turning that position is good for him. Will the clock run out? Oh, wow! Oh, wow! And Keith Lee still feeling the effects, but John, that was as close. Oh, the referee waved it off. The referee has waved it off. Jornel Lugo is now 7 and 0. Oh. But that choke is in place. It's a palm to palm right now. You see Keith Lee punching. Right there, he's out. You see those arms, he's out. He is out at that moment. The fight is over because he was out before the bell sounded. And even if that bell sounded, a ringside physician is not going to let Keith Lee go on because he went unconscious. Johnny's figuring that he's got his chin in there, but that can end quickly. All it takes is a little bit of a slide on that. There's a lot of pressure on that right now. Johnny Soto just trying to relax. That's what I was talking about. I said, you got time. He understands that. He knows it's just a matter of time before I break you down. And then when he gets the neck, he just slowly starts to slide that forearm under. Now he gets the hand over the top, brings it back to a palm to palm, slides it back over again, gets the twist on the neck that is tight. It's painful. And he just keeps on forcing that position till he gets the tap.
MMA fans love watching fighters who leave it all inside the cage. But when a fighter has no quit in them, it's the role of the referee to step in. This is critical moments seen clearly by peak. Athletes accept that injuries can happen at any moment. At the world famous Madison Square Garden, Chandler tried to fight his way through a kick to the perennial nerve against a relentless premise. Despite the champ's resilience, decisive decision making from the referee protected him from more serious damage. When you see Chandler moving around and then stepping and folding his ankle over, the referee is now concerned that the fighter cannot intelligently control his own body and be able to continue on in the fight in a safe way. What you're looking for the referee to do is give him some time to try to get it back to a normal position, and Michael was never able to get to that position. That's why he ended up stopping the fight. And just like a referee in the fight, Peak is here to keep you safe on the road. Peak, performance you can see. Don't go backwards, but circle out. Oh, big, big shot, shot from Corey Anderson. Bader immediately oh, covers up. See who takes control of this first round. Oh, there's your answer. Hit is all over. Just like that. Yeah, baby. The bold 93 proof rum that's edgy to the core. Bang! Oh. Right hand, right on the chin. And Felipe lands his eyes wide shut. Great stoppage by John McCarthy, but look at the placement on that right hand. Head snaps on the mat. Look at this. Eyes are cloudy. Just enough to see this punch coming, and that is it. Later needs to think about really just using his footwork. Circle out. Don't go backwards, but circle out. Oh, big, big shot from Corey Anderson. Bader immediately covers up. Swinging for the fences, swinging for the finals, swinging for that title shot that's eluded in his entire career. Lands a big right elbow, the ground and pound, pouring down, and it's over. Watch what happens. Beautiful head movement, and that right hand catches Bader right behind the ear. It disrupts him. He goes into a shell. He tried to get himself out. Watch the right hand. Corey moves his head off center line. Beautiful right hand right behind the ear on Bader. And you see him starting to shell up. He did try to move himself to try to grab the body and control Corey Anderson. And he just was unable to do it. When you are hit with a shot like that, it disrupts your patterns. It, that you think, oh, just do this. It's almost impossible. Big time finish by Corey Anderson just going after him. That is a huge win, the biggest of Corey Anderson's career. And that's what Josh is so good at. He's, he gives you so many different looks. He switches stance. Oh, nice left hand. Man, Pitbull, but he turns it over. Oh, that's it. It's over. It's, it's over. It's a weapon and it's done. The biggest win of his life. Patricky Pitbull has come to San Jose and knocked out Josh Tucker. Gentlemen, I missed it. What happened? I was looking right at it. I didn't see it. Hey, Jimmy, you better take us through because I don't know what I'm looking at. I look here. at it here. He catches him first with a body shot and then a left hand over top. That, oh, knocked that, off, that knocked him off balance. That was the first shot that knocked him off okay. balance. That wasn't the finishing blow. He sits up here and take a look at it, Shale. Sets him up. Bang! Oh, you're right. Right hand uppercut to the chin. Josh Thompson is done. That was just icing on the cake. Look at it here. Sets him up, catches him coming in, bang! Yeah, oh, right wow. on the chin. You know what that looks like to me? That looks like Dan Henderson, Henzo Grace. Oh, Pat Casey is hurt. You can see him. Look at his legs. He's starting to, he's starting to stiffen his legs out. He's starting to have some problems. Oh, this could do it. It is all over. Just like that. And then Peraldo says, oh, I see that you're hurt. Let me finish this off. He knows that Casey likes to drop his head down. Doesn't hit him clean, but enough to really hurt an already hurt fighter, Josh. Yeah, but John, the key to that, that flying knee was it landed right behind the knee. As you can see, right, right behind there. The ear. Boom, right behind the ear. Sorry. It's all right. I got it. There was a flying knee behind the knee. Just, got it. just beautiful positioning. And, oh, watch the listen to it at high speed. Beautiful job by Brother Tyree, a winner by split decision earlier good. tonight. Tyrell turning it on, looking to finish. And it is all over. Tyrell Fortune is a no. Watch the straight right. Straight down the pipe, touches him. 
You can see that sets on Yanwu back on his heels, drives him into the fence, and from that point, off of that straight right hand, things started going downhill fast for Zhu on Yanwu. See Tyrell just 156. cutting the angle on him, coming straight, landing the knee, big right hand, multiple shots, finish it, get the referee to step inside. Guts and the crit oh, on high. full display for this 34-year-old who is facing a man who is intent on being the future at 155. And an exchange along the fence as Kogan unloading on Neuro. Neuro goes down for the right. Referee steps in. And Archie Kogan on his birthday lights up Brian Neuro like candles and blows him away. And then the finish right here. Watch the... Dirty boxing, grabs the neck, big right hand, left hand, but watch his set up. The right hand comes over. That is a big shot. Neuro's on his butt. Referee has seen enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Doubled up and then tripled up. And now backs it up. That beautiful left jab, right hand. That gets Jeffrey's attention. Now he starts to push him back. The knee comes up. That one misses. But once he gets the head, gets this nice plum. Yeah, the he tie comes plum. up right there. He is in trouble and he lands There's one more. One. But it wasn't even needed. But he does have that underhook, that far side underhook. That would have helped him get out, but now he's trapped, trapped right again in this crucifix position. You gotta stay moving, Blue. You gotta stay moving. Away with elbows and left hands to the face of Bronco Busek, unable to intelligently defend himself. His arms neutralized. How much more is the referee going to allow? Newman now continues to meet out punishment. He's in real trouble right now. Look at where the head placement of Newman is. That arm is trapped, so now it's a matter of just raking elbows down on the face. He's is not going to make it out of this round if he cannot get his arm free. Move, move, move. That's a lot of hard shots just to the side of the head. A masterpiece of, of malevolence here on the part of Jordan Newman and the referee John English has seen enough. Jordan Newman improves to three and zero. Oh. Textbook boxing. It's all about the jab and Keith Lee trying to bring it to the ground. And yet it's Nubu again attacking the neck. Attacking the neck, but there's no legs in place, but he could get this to work. Right now, turning that position is good for him. Will the clock run out? Oh, wow! Oh, wow! And Keith Lee still feeling the effects, but John, that was as close. Oh, and it's over. Waved it off. The referee has waved it off. Jarnell Lugo is now seven. And oh, but that choke is in place. It's a palm to palm right now. You see Keith Lee punching right there. He's out. You see those arms. He's out. So he is out at that moment. The fight is over because he was out before the bell sounded. And even if that bell sounded, a ringside physician is not going to let Keith Lee go on because he went unconscious. Johnny's figuring that he's got his chin in there, but that can end quickly. All it takes is a little bit of a slide on that. There's a lot of pressure on that right now. Johnny Soto is trying to relax. It's tight. Lucas Brennan. That's what I was talking about when I said, you got time. He understands that. He knows it's just a matter of time before I break you down. And then when he gets the neck, he just slowly starts to slide that forearm under. Now he gets the hand over the top, brings it back to a palm to palm, slides it back over again, gets the twist on the neck that is tight. It's painful. And he just keeps on forcing that position till he gets the tap.
MMA fans love watching fighters who leave it all inside the cage. But when a fighter has no quit in them, it's the role of the referee to step in. This is critical moments seen clearly by Peak. Athletes accept that injuries can happen at any moment. At the world famous Madison Square Garden, Chandler tried to fight his way through a kick to the perennial nerve against a relentless premise. Despite the champ's resilience, decisive decision making from the referee protected him from more serious damage. When you see Chandler moving around and then stepping and folding his ankle over. The referee is now concerned that the fighter cannot intelligently control his own body and be able to continue on in the fight in a safe way. What you're looking for the referee to do is give him some time to try to get it back to a normal position, and Michael was never able to get to that position. That's why he ended up stopping the fight. And just like a referee in the fight, Peak is here to keep you safe on the road. Peak, performance you can see. Don't go backwards, but circle out. Oh, big, big shot from Corey Anderson. Bader immediately covers up. See who takes control of this first round. Oh, there's your answer. It is all over. Just like that. And then the bull 93 proof rum that's edgy to the core. Bang! Right hand right on the chin. And Felipe lands his eyes wide shut. Great stoppage by John McCarthy, but look at the placement on that right hand. Head snaps on the mat. Look at this. Eyes are cloudy. Just enough to see this punch coming, and that is it. Bader needs to think about really just using his footwork. Circle out. Don't go backwards, but circle out. Oh, big, big shot from Corey Anderson. Bader immediately covers up. Swing it for the fences, swing it for the finals, swing it for that title shot that's eluded in his entire career. Lands a big right elbow, the ground and pound, pouring down, and it's over. Watch what happens. Beautiful head movement, and that right hand catches Bader right behind the ear. It disrupts him. He goes into a shell. He tried to get himself out. Watch the right hand. Corey moves his head off center line. Beautiful right hand right behind the ear on Bader. And you see him starting to show up. He did try to move himself to try to grab the body and control Corey Anderson. And he just was unable to do it. When you are hit with a shot like that, it disrupts your patterns. That you think, oh, just do this. It's almost impossible. Big time finish by Corey Anderson just going after him. That is a huge win, the biggest of Corey Anderson's career. And, and that's what Josh is so good at. He's, he gives you so many different looks. He switches stance. Oh, nice left hand. Man, Pitbull, when he turns it over. because I don't know what I'm looking at. I look here. at it here. He catches him first with a body shot and then a left hand over the top. That, oh, knocked that, off, that knocked him off balance. That was the first shot that knocked him off okay. balance. That wasn't the finishing blow. He sits up here and take a look at it, Shale. Sets him up. Bang! Oh, you're right. Right hand uppercut to the chin. Josh Thompson is done. That was just icing on the cake. Look at it here. Sets him up, catches him coming in. Bang! Yeah. Oh, right wow. on the chin. You know what that looks like to me? That looks like Dan Henderson, Henzo Grace. Yeah, Pat Casey is hurt. You can see him. Look at his legs. He's starting to, he's starting to stiffen his legs out. He's starting to have some problems. Oh, this could do it. It is all over. Just like that. And then Peraldo says, oh, I see that you're hurt. Let me finish this off. He knows that Casey likes to drop his head down. Doesn't hit him clean, but enough to really hurt an already hurt fighter, Josh. Yeah, but John, the key to that,